Medical tourism started long years back, thousands of years ago, long centuries. The people started to travel from their home countries to other countries or to neighbor countries in order to get better, high quality and high standard healthcare and treatments. Today, with the updated technology, state-of-art technologies introduced in many countries. Turkey is one of these countries been invested lately heavy in healthcare industry and become one of the preferred destination and one of the leading destination for healthcare travelers. The healthcare travelers and medical tourism, the citizens are today traveling from one continent to other continents in order to get better and high standard quality of health care and affordable prices. This is what name it medical tourism. Dear partners, dear colleagues, I would like to give you a short information about our roadmap of cooperation. We have three steps of cooperation together. The first steps, Turkish Healthcare Travel Council has their own network offices in almost all countries where they are based locally and they are ready to collaborate with you in order to refer your patient to our hospitals and participant of our exhibitors and exhibitions and also to our healthcare service providers. They are speaking your native language and also they are ready to work with you closely in order to do all kind of follow-up together and in order to refer your patient to Turkey, to our members, to our exhibitors, to be treated high level, good quality, high standards with most affordable prices. In the second uh, position of cooperation, you have also an alternative to collaborate and to build partnership with one of the our participant of travel agencies, uh, associations, members. They are an accredited healthcare tourism facilitator. You can build a cooperation, you can build a partnership, and you can as well refer your patient through those travel agents, and you can cooperate together. As a third option, you can collaborate directly with our hospitals and clinics with their international patient departments and you can refer your patient and follow up together. So you have three an alternative how you can collaborate uh, in medical tourism in order to refer your patient to be treated in Turkey. Of course Turkish Healthcare Travel Council beside of the network offices. We do have our medical directors were working closely with our network offices following all our patients coming to Turkey from airport to airport. All steps and services need to be uh, delivered to your patient. To refer a patient from one of these alternative way that we propose to you, you need to share medical reports or MRI or whatever information uh, you have for your patient that we can able to evaluate in our hospitals and related doctors who is going to treat this patient that we can come back to you with treatment plan with the cost calculation with period of stays during the treatment, how many days in hospital, how many days approximately in ICU, or how many days in total stay uh, in Turkey with full uh, treatment and services. So after 
this evaluation, we will come back to you with the treatment plan and the cost. You provide all this information to your client and to your patient. If the patient decided to travel to Turkey, then you can coordinate with your partner, chosen partner, from three alternatives that we proposed to send your patient to Turkey to be treated and to be operated. So within this uh, cooperation, what will be your benefit of sending and referring a patient to Turkey? Depend on your agreement with your partners or with the hospitals or with Turkish Healthcare Travel Council offices, of course, you will receive a follow-up fee when you refer your patient to Turkey through one of the proposed channel of cooperation. The cooperation is going to be win-win. You will be win of follow-up fee for your work and also the patient will be the winner of getting high quality and high standard of treatment with affordable price according to world class of treatment. Today's Turkey become leader in medical tourism and healthcare travels. Turkey become a preferred destination by world travelers. Even during the pandemic period, we do receive from more than 165 countries close to half a million patients. Before pandemics, we arrive over 1 million patients hosting from 165 countries and mostly a high level of uh, satisfaction and happiness most of our, most of our patients return it back happy and treated well and uh, get the full service and treated uh, in our hospitals uh, under Turkish hospitality and the warm welcome by the doctors and the staffs. So we are here to collaborate with you in different level of steps, in different channels, in order to cooperate together under the win-win understanding. I would like to thank you very much taking your time and sparing your time to join our conference and our exhibition. And I would like to invite all of you to enter to our B2Bs, business to business meetings with our exhibitors in order to know each other and to build your partnership together with one of this channel that we proposed. So I would like to wish you and our exhibitors successful cooperation and successful meetings. And also do not forget to follow up our webinars where a lot of high-end star doctors being given and sharing their experience and know-how with updated and new technology of method of treatments. Thank you very much for your participation and thank you very much for your time being and sharing with us. Thank you. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, partners, participants and exhibitors and the visitors. Uh, this is our third day of medical tourism uh, online exhibition for Balkan region. So we continue with our uh, webinars today. So we have our webinars is continue till, <clears throat> till three o'clock uh, our time. And I think 2.30 uh, your times in Balkan region. We have one hour difference in between us. So we have important speaker at the end of the panels uh, from North Cyprus going to talk about uh, IVF uh, uh, fertility opportunities in, in North Cyprus and the treatments. 
and what kind of uh, services they are providing. That's important. Going to be live uh, live uh, uh, presentation. So hopefully you can follow all the presentation of today's. And uh, we are now starting with our first <clears throat> presenter. Uh, going to talk about movement disorders surgery. Associated Professor Dr. Mehmet Soraj, neurosurgeon from Lokman Hekim Group. Before going to <coughs> uh, broadcast our uh, webinars, first webinars and first presenter, I would like to remind all colleagues, all visitors, professional visitors who register in our exhibitions, please do uh, request B2B meetings with our uh, 35 exhibitors. We have travel agencies, medical tourism accredited agencies who are facilitating the patient between uh, countries to Turkey and etc. And also, uh, please, you can also request a direct meeting from our clinic and hospitals in B2B platforms. And also we have thermal resorts and spa and wellness resorts, one in Bodrum, CNG, the other one, Richmond, NOAA, close by to Istanbul, one hour drive uh, in Sapanja Lake side. So both are one of the leading uh, uh, spa and wellness resorts. And also we have from Afyon Coral Thermal Resorts, one of the leading thermal resorts. In, in Turkey and uh, in Afyon city, uh, where uh, the Wally of Thermal Hotels, uh, more than uh, 15 hotels available in that region, but the Coral, one of the leading of uh, that region, uh, serving uh, physiotherapy and rehabilitation integrated with, uh, with thermal uh, waters. So please uh, do uh, request uh, B2B meetings with our exhibitors in order to build your cooperation closely and uh, to cooperate with them win-win that we can able to uh, help uh, our citizens who are suffering from the different diseases, who are looking for affordable uh, cost and affordable treatment with high quality and high technology uh, treatment and surgeries. So we do provide all this service in Turkey, as you may remember in my opening speech, I already mentioned that in 2019, we have host more than uh, 1 million patients uh, before pandemic. Even during the pandemic time, we host close to half a million patients from uh, close to 100 uh, countries. So uh, this year's, uh, the number of countries has been increased, almost 150 countries. We have received more than 750,000 first nine months of our uh, calendar years. So uh, we are hoping to close this year uh, 800, 850,000 patients from 100, 165, 160, 65 countries uh, from all over the world. Turkey become one of the preferred and uh, the most uh, preferable destination because Turkey never closed their gate to uh, humanity who are suffering from different diseases. Even during the high level of pandemic period, we were receiving international patient in order to help and assist them and in order to uh, treat them. So Turkey never closed their gate. The gates are open with Turkish hospitality and warm welcome. And we are, uh, we would like to welcome all of your patients and citizens in our country in order to provide them our uh, good quality of healthcare services and the treatment. Now, let me uh, leave the floor to Associated Professor Dr. Mehmet Sorar, neurosurgeon uh, from Lokman Hekim Group from Ankara. They have several hospitals in Ankara, one of the leading hospitals in Ankara actually. And he will going to talk about the professor. We're going to talk about movement disorders surgery. The floors are yours, professor. I would like to begin with saying hello and extending my gratitude for giving me the opportunity to present in front of you. 
Today I would like to tell you about the movement disorders that are treated and operated in our hospital in Ankara in the University of Lokman Hakim. I am the neurosurgeon and I work at the University of Lokman Hakim. I specialize in movement disorders covering the whole range of motor dysfunction, including the very common Parkinson's disease. The majority of patients in our hospital suffer from Parkinson's disease, covering approximately 8% of our patients. The remainder of our patients suffer from essential limb tremors. In Lockman Hacking, we use deep brain stimulation to treat patients including those with Parkinson's disease. We place a deep brain stimulator inside the patient's skull which is a rare procedure that is not often found around the world. Even in Turkey, very few places carried out this procedure. I am the third person in all of Turkey who can carry out this procedure. We have completed approximately 500 surgeries to treat Parkinson's disease. Now I will provide you with a short review of this disease. Surgical measures to treat Parkinson's disease were introduced in the beginning of 1950s. This was then where was a new way of treating this disease. In the late 1960s, the first levodopa surgery was carried out. However, due to a range of difficulties, this surgery had no use for general practice. After this, the progress in the treatment of Parkinson's disease was hindered for 20 years until the 1980s. Parkinson's disease was brought to special attention in the late 1980s. However, the first real success was achieved in the beginning of 2000s. Due to this history, the surgical procedure to treat Parkinson's disease is considered to be very young, only 20 years old. I started using this procedure on patients with Parkinson's disease starting in 2010. I have 10 years worth of experience with this procedure and to this day we have treated 500 patients. You may ask me, how come so few procedures have been carried out? To this I will respond that there are a lot of technical difficulties, as the intersection between surgery and technology must be correctly identified. Firstly, one must be very technically adept. Secondly, you need a very good cardiologist, anesthesiologist and physiologist. Evidently, this procedure can be carried out just by one doctor, but requires a team of professionals. Once the team of doctors goes through a consensus, the decision regarding the surgery is made. In much the same way, the surgery is a team effort from all the professionals. Only by cooperating with each other can the surgery be carried out properly. To carry out this brain surgery, the patient must undergo a range of scans. I am not going to go into the details of all the required scans as that would take up a lot of time. In short, the scans concern the stem cells found in the brain. Stem cells are counted and radiological images are derived. If these images are not very clear, the risk of missing something that can cause future problems is increased. To avoid this, we take great caution when looking at the anatomical scans. These scans allow us to plan our next steps. I want to emphasize that we pay attention to even the smallest of details. The most important part of the surgery is that we reach the brain stem, also known as the brain nucleus, the size of which ranges from 0.5 mm to 1.5 mm. Because of such a small size, we must have a very precise scans of this nuclear in order to understand how to navigate every specific patient. Before I forget, I need to remind you that this surgery is carried out on an awake patient. During the surgery, we must speak to the patient, ask them questions. This allows us to understand what kind of benefits are being achieved throughout the surgery. In order to be able to perform a surgery with an awake patient and the use of deep brain stimulation, the anesthesia must be very strong. As I mentioned previously, deep brain stimulation is used in motor disorders such as tremor symptoms in Parkinson's disease and essential tremors. On a side note, I would like to tell you other uses for deep brain stimulation. It can be used in neuropathology, epileptic seizures, depression treatment and more.
In Turkey, deep brain stimulation is mainly used in movement disorders and Parkinson's disorder and essential tremors. In our clinic, we have limited experience of using this stimulation in other disorders. We performed a few deep brain stimulation procedures on patients with epilepsy. However, we strive to perform more such surgeries in the near future, along with deep brain stimulation for other disorders. Therefore, we aim to keep developing this field in Turkey. Our goal, much like the goal of doctors around the world, is to explore the subthalamic nucleus and two other nuclei found in the brain stem. When these areas are stimulated correctly, we can see very good results where the patient is truly getting better. The second most popular goal of stimulation is globus pallidus. This is also one of the areas used to treat Parkinson's disease, dystonia, the essential tremors. However, this area is a lot of more difficult. Unlike subthalamic nucleus, globus pallidus requires a much more precise mathematical calculation for a successful result. Therefore, I would like to emphasize that such surgeries require a very precise plan of action, because you are working with the most complicated brain area. You are working with brain stems and nuclei, where the smallest mistakes in calculations can result in bad consequences. The smallest of mistakes can lead to linguistic dysfunction, optical dysfunction, motor dysfunction, or even death. We were lucky enough to not have a single negative consequence or problem with all 500 surgery that we've carried out. All of our patients are now doing well. Unlike essential necrosis, globus pallidus is located closer. Thus, there is a smaller chance of mistake and wrong calculations. Operating on globus pallidus is less likely to cause negative side effects. Essential necrosis is more dangerous because it's found deeper in the brain, increasing the possibility of miscalculations which can lead to more problems. However, I have to tell you that in our hospital, throughout the history of treating any of the aforementioned disorders, we never had negative side effects. Now I want to tell you about Parkinson's disorder, about the tremors and essential tremors. This is uncontrolled shaking of the hands that causes the life quality of the patient to decrease significantly. For example, they cannot put a spoon into their mouth or they cannot drink water from a glass. They cannot brush their hair. Some patients can be in very bad conditions where the tremors are so strong. Essential tremors have the same symptoms. Furthermore, such tremors can happen due to head trauma. If the treatment is handled properly, such tremors can be controlled using brain stimulation. To put it simply, pull the patient out of the darkness into the light. During the surgery, the patient's tremors are reduced as much as possible. In the post-surgery life of the patient, such tremors should no longer be a problem. They either disappear altogether or are reduced significantly and the patients can live a full life and be happy. There was once a case study where a famous musician started experiencing tremors. He could no longer play the musical instrument due to the very strong tremors of his hands. He entered the operating room with shaking hands and left the operating room completely healthy. He could even continue playing his instrument. I will now summarize for you how this procedure is carried out. We insert a loop into the patient's head. We always use the same type of loop. We connect this loop to a computer where the specific coordinates and parameters are logged in. 
Once the correct coordinates are set up, they are carefully translated through this loop and the tip of the needle starts to move towards the planned location. Right now I will show you another loop that has already been placed on the patient's head. After using MRI and tomographic images, we create a plan that is specific to the patient in front of us. Here we can see the radiological images that I have mentioned earlier. On this image over here, you can see that green and red colors signify the subthalamic necrosis. Later, with the help of recordings, we change it to a three-point state. In order to adjust the clinical motor diffidences, the Parkinson's syndrome and encephalomic necrosis as well. You can see on the next slide the way we change the cephalomic necrosis into a three-point state. Here you can see a scan of a different patient where the same procedure has been carried out. This is a one millimeter pea-sized very small nucleus that is located very deep in the brain. Here is an image of how the loop looks when it's placed on a human head. As I promised before, to do this we had to acquire MRI scans and tomographic scans. Only after we compared the scans were we able to come up with the right coordinates. The comparison of the scans is necessary because MRI scans have a standard error of 1.5 mm, while the tomography scans have a much smaller standard error. MRI scans provide a more precise and detailed anatomical image. Meanwhile, in the tomography scans, the image is less precise. The main benefit of tomography is the smaller error rate. Due to this, before we place the loop on the patient's head, we have to compare the MRI and tomography scans. As we are comparing them against each other, the standard error is reduced. Only after this is done, we can move towards the target area. That is the nucleus. To conclude the loop is placed on the head of the patient, the coordinates are logged into the computer, the standard error is reduced, the patient is fully conscious and can have a conversation with us, and we can proceed with the surgery. We have the entry point, the entry point is a name for the place where the needle that is attached to the loop enters the patient's head. The patient doesn't feel any pain because we use local anesthesia. I will repeat that throughout the surgery the patient doesn't feel any discomfort or pain. Before the surgery begins, if necessary, the hair is removed and the skull cap can be removed. After the skull cap is moved, the electrical brain stimulator that I mentioned prior is introduced. Then the computer records the signals collected by the microelectrodes. Then, with the help of computer tomography, much like in EEG, we send electrophysiological impulses into the electrical brain stimulator. That way, as it's shown on the photo, the small electrode produces a signal. Here we can see what such a signal would look like. The signal is sent out by the subthalamic nucleus. This way we are assured that we have reached and desired goal. We then analyze the signal in both anatomical and digitally. Then, finally, before we place the stimulator into the brain, we make sure that we are in the correct location with the help of electrophysiology. I would like to emphasize once again that we use both anatomical, digital and electrophysiological markers to ensure that we are at the right location. Only after this can we turn on the electrical stimulator to identify the presence of the response. Out of the electrophysiology, we turn on the brain stimulation and try to identify the results. I must repeat, the patient is fully conscious and we place the brain stimulator on the correct location. Once we finish up the surgery, we take new MRI images 
to ensure that we placed the electrodes into the necessary nuclei, to ensure that the electrodes are in the correct area in the size of one, one and a half millimeter region. If the scan shows us that electrodes are in the correct location, we can finish the surgery. What are some of the main difficulties that can occur for surgery? Let me summarize. Some blood vessels and veins in the brain may be damaged, which will result in internal bleeding. There is also a chance of post-surgery infection. There are predictable difficulties that can happen to 1% of patients in this branch of medicine. In our hospital, we have not seen this happen yet to a single patient out to the 500 that were treated. However, even when these issues come up, they do not present as too much danger or difficulty to fix. Once we had a problem similar to internal bleeding, however, it resolved by itself. Here I will show you some video advice. This is a patient that we operated on. As you can see before the surgery, he cannot properly walk. He cannot even sit down without external assistance. His movements are very slow. Now this video was taken after the surgery. You can see that his walking became a lot faster. All of these movements occur a lot faster. This is another ill patient that cannot move without the help of others. In this video you can see that after the surgery he walks a lot freer and better. There are our patients with Parkinson's disorder. Here is another patient diagnosed with dystonia who cannot walk without assistance. As you can see, this patient cannot control their own actions and their own body. She cannot eat, cannot drink, cannot pick up her own child. Here you can see that the patient is sitting down and cannot control the right side of their body, mainly their right leg. Now you will see how the patient's right hand will be lifted, which will demonstrate how the patient cannot control the left side of their body. Now this is the same patient after the surgery. As you can see, she is completely healthy and can move her hands. She is completely normal. This video was taken during the surgery. As you can see, during the surgery, the patient is having a conversation with us, but their whole body is in tremors. The patient cannot control these tremors. Not to drag it out too long, here I would like to show you the patient after the brain stimulation. The tremors and shaking are gone. This way Parkinson's, essential tremors, dystonia, motor dysfunctions can be treated if you recognize it, at the right time. The improvement rates are really high. When patients come see us, they usually have Parkinson's disease. Here right now I will be using Parkinson's disease as an example. If the patient is suffering from Parkinson's disease for less than three years, we immediately guide them to the neurological ward. There are colleagues from the neurological ward conduct a certain number of tests. If those tests are positive, the patient goes through a physiological assessment and if those tests are in order, then the patient needs the surgery. This calls for a medical consensus, where all the pros and cons of the surgery are reviewed. The doctors reach a conclusion about whether the surgery must be carried out or not. Usually this consensus takes two days, then one more day is used to prepare the patient for the surgery. If all goes well on the fourth day, we are able to operate on the patient. I will repeat one more time, the patient is awake during the surgery. After the surgery, the patients do not require special care and are placed in a ward with other patients. After two days of observation, the patients are prescribed specific medicines. This usually occurs on day 5-6. None of our patients ever required any special attention because everything always goes according to plan. Thank you so much for listening to my lecture. If you would like to get in touch with me, you can see my phone and email below. Thank you very much.
Ladies and gentlemen, good morning once again, who is joining us uh, newly. So wish you happy and healthy days from the third day of our online exhibition for Balkan region, Turkish medical tourism online exhibition, third edition. We continue with our webinars, thanks to uh, Professor Mehmet Sorar from Lokman Ekim Group. He made a wonderful presentation regarding movement uh, disorders surgery. It was very informative uh, with integrative with uh, some visual and the video show. It was really uh, very informative, uh, thanks to uh, him that he's sharing all his experience uh, in uh, this uh, surgery type of surgery. Now we are going to Medicana Health Group from Istanbul. Dr. Ibrahim Tavukcuoğlu will gonna talk about uh, calcification and uh, prosthesis uh, methods and treatments. And I would like to leave the floor to Medicana Health Group, Dr. Ibrahim Tavukcuoğlu. Dr. Ibrahim, the floors are yours. Hello, today we will speak about joints, operational processes with joint issues and processes and other related topics. Joints are connected, as we all know, with cartilages. Over time, these cartilages become more run down. Accordingly, in any of the joints, there is a cartilage. Let's discuss the joints and cartilages that go for the most pressure in the body. As a person ages and grows old, their cartilages also wither, and so the older the person is, the older the cartilage, which starts to fray. Not only is this related to aging of a person, but it may be because of physical trauma experienced in the past, like birth defects, as well as metabolic diseases and rheumatism, and so on. Every disease from the past will lead to fraying of cartilages and joints. At the start of the treatment, we start the conservative treatment, physiotherapy, thorough investigation of how the cartilages connect with the joints and potentially other disturbances. After all of the examinations and uncovering of the causes, we give the course for a prosthesis. A prosthesis is an artificial joint. It could be made from metal and ceramic components. In the standard deterioration, there are no such issues. But when those patients come, you need to be more wary. This patient has gone through osteopathy. As you can see here, when the patient was 50 years old, we already installed a prosthesis in them. This is how you can observe the top snapshots. There is a hip curvature. We need osteopathy and a very good plan of the work. Before the prosthesis installation surgery, it needs to be carefully prepared and thought out. In other words, the axis of it must survive. The preliminary plan is very important to end with a good result. After the left side prosthetic surgery, this patient was fitted with a classical standard prosthesis. The right side of the hip begins, we begin to see a twist. Out of the osteopathy, we must straighten the axis, rotate the hip downwards, so there is symmetry. As there is a narrow bone marrow is behind the hip bone, there needs to be a special type of prosthesis. And we, after looking at the results, we draw up a clear operation plan. After they create the plan of operating procedures, Using a severe loosening, we cut off the tip. Using the same technique, we take the hip bone, we return to the original position and install the prosthesis. There were preliminary snapshots. This one, however, is after three years. As you can see, the joint has fully come into its place. The limb disappeared and there are no other problems. And through this entire period, as the patient walked around with this joint, they were also going through physiotherapy, 
always we were trying to strengthen their hip bone because they were not using it for many years. So this is one very small but important detail after the operation period. In the period of three years, as you can see, no problems arose. Sometimes there are cases like this. This is also one of our suffering patients with obesity. There were four surgeries performed on him. Once, as you can see in the top glued part, the adhesive substance lasted and managed to swim out to the side. The lower part of the prosthesis broke and turned a little bit. Due to this, the patient once again could not walk. And at the top of the scan, as you can see, there is severe damage of the bone. Right at this point, there also needs to be a clear plan of procedures. This prosthesis must be taken out, then cleaned from the adhesive. And just as I showed you, if there is a bone rotation, it also must be solved. Here we decided to use allograph. There is the post-surgery scans. Here we used a prosthetic model. Cleaned the adhesive substance, restored the hip, and placed a long system model to install the allograph. There are the literal photos during the operation. These fragments that we took from the leg of the patient, like here, look, the leftovers of the adhesive substance that we took out. I've shown you the preliminary photos and the post-surgical ones as well. Of course, I want to say not all the entering patients are in such a bad state. Those are extreme cases. That is what we call them. There are also standard, lighter case. In a standard situation, nothing is too difficult. As seen in the photo, a standard case, if there is no need for adhesive, we must create a filling of the hip bone. We observe ephemeral antiversion and between them there must be an alignment from 15 to 20 millimeters. If this is done without the adhesive substance, we use a press fit. We need to correctly measure them. Another important factor you need to measure the length correctly. I will repeat, if you plan to not use an adhesive substance, then very importantly, you must use press fit. This is very important for the hip bone. And so, I will again tell you why you use adhesive substance and why you can choose not to. We look at the state of the joints. For example, if the hip bone is in normal condition, then during the operation, we'll decide to not use adhesive. Many say that an adhesive prosthesis has no problems for several years. But in my view, I do not agree with this. If the state of the bone is not very great, potentially related to arthritic diseases, then it could be a cause of rheumatoid arthritis. With this in mind, there will need to be a systematic treatment. It is very favorable for the doctor to be very familiar with the instruments used in surgery. The type or design of the prosthesis does not matter, unlike the instruments you will use and the instruments you are used to. I usually recommend keramic hydrocypatic prosthesis they are adhesive-free, because I consider them better than others. That is my personal point of view. I still use keramic somatic prosthesis, though I only recommend this option to younger patients. As when the patient walks with these prosthesis, it may cause some sound. I have experienced this in my practice. This is why I recommend polytonic keramics. I had a situation where the keramic prosthesis broke, but this is very rare for the keramic prosthesis to break. To repeat myself, I experienced and witnessed this is only one of my patients. In work cancer in the hip, everything depends on your habits and what you're most used to.
You must know it's the literal tool you will use during the operation. The best option is not opposing the tools you are used to. I always approach this literally starting from the beginning, concretely investigating everything and getting to work. And no matter how many prosthesis devices I have implanted by now, I've never had it dislocate or slide. At the end of the operation, I will thoroughly, firmly and securely stitch the glute in its place. Only then I will close it. On the next day, after the operation, I will have the patient go through physiotherapy. I also want to discuss knees and knee joints with you. I want to say that we go through very effective surgeries on knees. As you may know, knees and hip bone prosthesis must be good so that patients are still satisfied. If expressed correctly, knee surgery is not bone but cartilage surgery. In a knee surgery, the most important is to protect the connection. Unlike a hip surgery, the curvature of the knee must absolutely be corrected. In knee surgery, the curvature of the axis may need several resections. But you need to really try to avoid this. For these ill people, you could use a revised prosthesis. Here's an extreme case. As you can see on this snapshot, in the intersection the cartilage has stayed. It has been worn out, likely against itself. We observed a severe curvature. For these patients, a preliminary plan of action is very important. This patient has been ill a while and has not walked properly in a long time. So we need to correct the intersection and straighten on the high pressure in the ideal direction. Here are some more literal shots. I say adults and elderly around the age of 70 to 75. As one of the knees is done, you need to do the second straight after. As a person with a healthy knee puts more pressure on the other, so it deforms even more. With age strength becomes limiting, so over time this begins to bother the patient. Here are our post-surgery scans. As you've seen the preliminary snapshots, you can see that the literal curvature of the knee is straight. As it goes for knee prosthesis, I first straighten the curvature if it's there. If it curves forward, I place the prosthesis on the back side. If the patient is in tile, then I must use a systematic prosthesis. Before the surgery, I must compose a graphic of axis length and go through all the necessary measures that all the actions are straight and correct. Again, for patients in their 70s, I recommend a dual side prosthesis, not on one side, precisely both sides. If they're not too old, you can install a one-sided in six weeks. You may do the second prosthesis. That is if the patient is younger than 70. After 60 years of age, the period after the surgery, the next day after the surgery, I start to check resistance. Over time, I introduce crutches. You can start walking immediately. Consistent training is a must. This happens very gradually. After the adhesive substance dries, everything will secure a hold. I observed all of this carefully. Following these steps, you may bit by bit begin movement to fill it out. However, when it comes to the hip bone, I try to not use adhesive, unlike the knees where I always do. From my experience, with the different patients that come to me, I've come to a conclusion that it's best to use adhesive when we are concerning knee surgery. I will again say that any damage to the hip or the knee could be caused through childhood trauma, from birth defects to rheumatism. There are important factors to consider, but there isn't much difference between them during surgery. If at a young age there is a leg curvature, then this illness can be prevented preemptively. The time to place in some sort of measure, as to not wait for an adult age and the last moment. Recently, in this area, 
were successful. And things are going great. No one raises issues. I'm sure that with time we will have more even better methods of treatment for hips, knees and all connections in the human body. At this moment, unfortunately, these are our only available methods. Currently, we only have processes. They remove unnecessary problems from a person and return them to the past way of life. At this moment, I believe that this is the best solution for these issues. Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants, visitors and exhibitors, uh, once again, good morning to the new colleagues who are joining us newly since morning. Uh, this is my third announcement, but uh, every time and each time I see that new participant and new uh, followers uh, and follow up people are joining. So that's why I'm repeating my good morning and happy and healthy days messages. Uh, sorry for that. Uh, our previous colleagues who have uh, listening from the beginning. Uh, we, thanks to Dr. Ibrahim Tawukcholo, actually it was a um, very, very nice uh, presentation was, very informative. And I enjoyed a lot with uh, his uh, very wide uh, explanation and uh, deep explanation about the treatment, method of treatment that he is uh, uh, providing from, uh, from his side <clears throat> as doctor. It is very successful uh, uh, methods, uh, actually, and uh, thanks to his uh, contribution and participation, and thanks to American Health Group that uh, joining and participating in our webinars. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to go to Ankara, to capital city, Bashkent University Health Group presentation. Bashkent University is uh, one of the leading universities in medicine faculties where they have uh, hospitals in different uh, parts of Turkey. Uh, they are based in Ankara, uh, centrally headquartered, but they have uh, hospitals in Istanbul, in Alanya, Antalya, in uh, Izmir, and also in Adana. So uh, they have uh, quite uh, a big chain of uh, hospital groups under affiliation with uh, university uh, med medicine faculty, medical faculty, and. Uh, Mr. Uh, Teodora or Mrs. Teodora uh, Mermut going to be with us uh, with the uh, presentation about Bashkent University Healthcare Group uh, in general presentation. It is not a technical webinars or any kind of direction, but it is a general presentation about the group of hospitals uh, of Bashkent Group. Uh, let's listen to Teodora Mermut. The floors are yours, dear Teodora. Uh, hello, uh, my name is Teodora, and uh, today I am going to uh, tell you about uh, Bashkent University Healthcare, Healthcare Group. Uh, uh, Bashkent University is the first foundation university to teach health sciences in Turkey. It was founded in 1993 and uh, with the cooperation of the Turkish Organ Transplant and Birth Treatment Foundation uh, and Haberal Education uh, Foundation, through determined, effort, through determined effort, self sacrifice, sacrifice and confidence in our abilities, the university has made uh, impressive progress in a very short time. Uh, as you can see, the uh, campus frustration project started in 1993 with the one tree. Uh, since then, nearly 5 million trees have been planted over the past 25 years. Uh, today, our uh, Bashkent University campus looks like this. Uh, contribute, contribute, contributing to Turkey's educational and cultural uh, advancement since its foundation, Bashkent University continues to provide state-of-the-art of service with the primary focus uh, on teaching and research uh, while meeting all international standards and requirements of uh, competition. 
both nationally and internationally, Bashkent University is a leader in its field with its high quality research and education. Uh, uh, this is the uh, healthcare, uh, Bashkent Healthcare Group. Uh, in this respect, Bashkent University is dedicated to carrying the group's medical sector expertise to the training and education of future generation of healthcare uh, professionals through its facility of medicine, facility of health sciences, and facility of dentistry. Uh, during years, uh, Bashkent, uh, Bashkent Healthcare Group grow uh, to uh, uh, one university, six university hospitals, 16 daily centers, nine outpatient clinics, two private high schools, two hotels, and uh, six foundations within a short period. Uh, uh, our healthcare group is, as I told you, a six university hospital, but uh, including the dentistry centers, they are uh, 10 full-fledged research hospitals. Now I'm going to tell you a little bit more about our uh, hospitals in our in the different provinces of Turkey. Uh, uh, Bashkent Healthcare Group has more than 8,500 8, employees and 1,500 bed capacity. Uh, Bashkent Ankara Hospitals, uh, <clears throat> Total with his total 496 bed capacity, uh, provides 24 hour service with 17 operating tiers and has a separate unit for some day surgery, same day surgery. Realizing the need for highest level intensive care, Ankar Hospital offer wide, wide range of intensive care units. Uh, Bashkent Adana Hospitals, uh, it includes the biggest and most modern dialysis dialysis center in the world. It has 66,945 square meters indoor areas and capacity of 523 beds, 21 operating tiers of theaters and for any kind of surgical operation, intensive care units and 118 beds. Uh, Bashkent Istanbul hospitals provide services to its patients with capacity of one, uh, 126 beds, five operating theaters, 30, uh, 38 intensive care unit beds. Uh, Bashkent Izmir hospitals with capacity of 25 beds is located in Izmir, which is one of the metro metropolitan cities of, of Turkey uh, in Asian region. Uh, Bashkent Konya hospital, it is located at the center it provides service to patients from all over the world with uh, its polyclinics, capacity of 163 beds, dialysis center with capacity of 30 kidney machine, burn unit, two delivery rooms, seven operating theaters. Bashkent Alanya Hospitals, it is located in the center of Alanya, which is one of the most popular holiday destinations. As the best organized hospital and dialysis center in the region, Alanya Hospitals offer a service with its capacity of 118 beds, 27 beds, intensive care unit, and five operating theaters. Uh, these are uh, the, some uh, statistics, operations in numbers. Uh, annually, uh, Bashkent uh, is, uh, is taking care of uh, more uh, approximately 4 million patients. Uh, of which uh, 260,000 outpatients, 65,000 operations, and approximately 13,550 foreign patients. Uh, the statistic for transplantation is, as you can see, is uh, 3,239 kidney, 693 liver, 142 heart, 1,183 bone marrow, and uh, 364 cornea which is making Bashkent uh, one of the leaders in uh, transplantations uh, in Turkey. Uh, <clears throat> the medic, uh, our experience in healthcare sector gives to our patients and their families confidence in high quality and affordable price. Our philosophy is helping you to feel like home by offering world-class medical treatment. Our healthcare uh, professionals have to meet rigorous international quality standards in order to practice in Turkey. 
Our expertise is on the following areas in Turkey, as you can see. <coughs> Uh, now I also want to mention you uh, about the most uh, um, wanted and the most attractive uh, uh, departments uh, by uh, foreigners. First of all, it's the organ transplantation center, uh, starting with uh, the first successful kidney transplantation in uh, 1975. The organ and tissue transplantation works have been continuously developing. The first organ transplantation in Turkey was made by Professor Dr. Mehmet Haveral, uh, the founder of Bashkent University Healthcare Group. At Bashkent University Hospitals, kidney, liver, heart, and cornea transplants are successfully performed with high success rate. Uh, new researches and ap application are carried out by our academic staff at Bashkent University a Facility of Medicine. A faculty of medicine, sorry. The university has a special organ and tissue transplantation center in Ankara and experienced uh, scholars have been carrying out many transplantation operations in this center. Uh, the burn care unit. Baskin uh, <coughs> have been among the innovators of modern burn care uh, in Turkey since founded. Uh, Bashkent University Burn and Fire Disaster Institute was established by Dr. Mehmet Haberal in 2000, the year of 2000, within the structure of Bashkent. Currently, there are three burn centers uh, affiliated with the institute. Uh, these burn centers are located in two different regions of Turkey, Adana in the south uh, and Konya, Konya. Uh, and Ankara in the uh, more capital uh, central zone, especially trained staff, including general surgeons, pediatric surgeons, plastic and reconstructive surgeons, anest anesthetists, nutritionists, physiotherapists, phys psychiatrists, and uh, social workers, nurses, and healthcare workers are employed in these modern, modernly designed centers. Department of Radio Radiation Oncology is extremely popular uh, among our international patients, not only our international patients, but uh, our Turkish patients also. Uh, cancer is one of the most important causes of death all over the world. Radiotherapy is used in a wide, wide range of cancers uh, safely. It can be used alone or in uh, conjunction with other treatment uh, modalities, including surgery and chemotherapy. The treatment is usually completely non-invasive and accessed through outpatient clinics. Uh, MR LINAC is a leading edge technology in radiotherapy. Uh, Bashkent is uh, uh, one of the owners of MR LINAC. Uh, <coughs> MR LINAC is a high tech device consisting of combination of magnetic resonance imaging device and a linear accelerator NAC in a single device. With MR-guided radio radiation therapy, the tumor can be imaged in real time and provided capacity to monitor tumor by assisting to keep radiation during therapy in, on the tumor in a sensitive manner, applies radiation with higher accuracy to tumor region. Thanks to device MR feature, irradiation is performed by imaging tumor clearly. By this way, top level protection is ensured with the surrounding organs. It provides the opportunity to shorten the treatment period up to one, between one and five days according to conventional radiotherapy. Uh, Versa HD linear accelerator, uh, is a, a device used for external radiotherapy. Uh, external radiotherapy is the most common type of radiation therapy used for cancer treatment. It is called external because the radiation is applied uh, from a source outside of the body through a skin into the body and right through to the tumor tissue. Uh, brachytherapy uh, is a, a type of radiation therapy used to treat cancer but it is inter yeah. internal uh, radiotherapy. Uh, radioactive source is put inside the body into or near the tumor to kill cancer cells and shrink tumors. Uh, 
<coughs> Another popular uh, department is the cardiac center. Uh, the quality of our hospital's experience is predicted, predicated on an outstanding car cardiothoracic surgical clinical program in which patients receive the highest quality, most advanced and effective surgical treatments. Today, Bashkent University hospitals provide cardiovascular surgery service at six different centers, and our medical staff performs more than 3,000 radio cardiovascular operations annually. We offer a border, border selection of medical, surgical, and minimally invasive options to more people of all ages, including do, do those who are not considered candidates for treatment uh, in another place. One of the pr priorities of our unit has been surgical treatment of con con uh, congenital heart disease since its foundation. Recently, our unit is, unit is one of the most distinguished centers, not only in our country, also one of the most busy units in Europe, performing up to approximately 650 surgeries on children every year, particularly accepting newborns and babies in the first year of their life. Uh, Bashkent University Adult Bone Marrow Transplantation Center uh, is founded in 2004 uh, under the Department of Hematology. The department uh, incorporates a clinic unit, research laboratory, uh, apheresis unit, and cell processing unit, and is one of the most modern bone marrow transplantation centers in Turkey. Uh, general surgery. Uh, in general, is the extremely popular uh, department. Many patients from abroad are coming for a different uh, uh, for different surgeries. Uh, also, it is uh, it is very popular the bariatric and metabolic surgery. We have a professional team who is uh, performing uh, operations for uh, with patient with obesity for losing weight and uh, helping them to start to live a better and a more healthy life. Uh, our medical oncology unit is also uh, extremely modern. We are uh, have a capacity of uh, to uh, our chemotherapy unit has capacity to uh, provide chemotherapy for uh, many patients. One at the same time, uh, we also have uh, uh, a robot who is uh, uh, mixing and preparing the uh, medications for uh, chemotherapy. Uh, uh, our international patient department is uh, providing a, a high level professional services to our international patients starting from uh, their uh, uh, putting their diagnosis they're, they're coming in Turkey uh, during all the, the process of their treatment you know, radio Bashkent and uh, uh, a dairy products factory Achkar, uh, which is a closed process. It starts from our uh, farm where we are uh, taking care for the animals, uh, producing uh, milk and milk products in our factory, and uh, uh, we are selling them in our uh, uh, special uh, shops. Uh, this is shortly the uh, what I can tell you about the uh, Bashkent Healthcare Group. Uh, thank you for your attention. Ladies and gentlemen, dear participants and colleagues, uh, dear partners and uh, dear exhibitors and visitors, Thanks to uh, Madame Theodora Mermut from Bashkent University Groups, which uh, she made a general presentation about the groups, uh, about the hospitals, about the universities and faculties. It was very informative. Of course, there is a possibility also that so many students can travel to Turkey and study in this medicine faculties or can have higher degrees, uh, PhDs uh, and uh, baccalaureate uh, degrees in this, uh, in this uh, university hospitals, because 
uh, Turkish universities are accepting now uh, a foreign uh, student in different level of uh, studies uh, for uh, medicine and healthcare uh, education. So uh, we continue with um, Professor Dr. Mustafa Yildirim from Sanko uh, Health Group. As we mentioned yesterday, that Sanko Health Group uh, based in Gaziantep City, they are also a university hospital and they have uh, medical faculty and medicine faculty in their uh, university and Sanko hospitals are affiliated with the university together. So we can consider that Sanko is university hospital as well. They are well known in the region and one of the best hospital, one of the leading hospital in Gaziantep. Uh, possibly that you can work together with Sanko because uh, there is daily basis more than four or five flights from Istanbul connecting to Gaziantep one hour, 15 minutes or one hour, 30 minutes flights with uh, two hour uh, transit from Istanbul, uh, Sabih Gökçen or from Istanbul airport, you can reach Gaziantep, you can uh, refer your patient to Gaziantep. And, uh, and, and don't forget that out of Istanbul, uh, Ankara, Gaziantep, Izmir, uh, Adana, uh, Mersin, uh, Bursa city, uh, you know, uh, these are, uh, or Trabzon city, these are uh, more affordable cities than the main destination Istanbul, because Istanbul has more uh, general cost and higher cost of living. So that's why if you are looking for affordable costs, better price than what you get from Istanbul, then uh, if you have no possibility to be treated with the offer of uh, Istanbul uh, hospitals, then you may try Ankara, Gaziantep, or uh, Bursa, or Trabzon, or many other cities, small cities, where also they are providing high quality of healthcare services and treatments, but much more affordable prices than Istanbul. So I do recommend you also take an offer, an alternative offer uh, for your patients for your citizens' treatments in those cities as well. Let me give the floor to Professor Dr. Mustafa Yildirim. He will gonna talk about medical oncology. Professor, the floors are yours. Wish you success in your presentation. Hello everyone. Uh, this is Mustafa Yildirim from Sanko University Hospital. Uh, located in Turkey. I am the medical oncologist and clinical chief of oncology department. Uh, cancer is not a single disease. Cancer is the common uh, is the, uh, common name of many different diseases. Cancer is a very common disease increasing uh, day by day because of the effects of modern uh, day and lifestyle. Uh, cancer patients are treated with surgery, chemotherapy, and radiotherapy. Uh, chemotherapy playing a very important role in treatment period. is a generic medicine that can be used to treat cancer. Oncology includes a treatment for tumors that can be treated. This medicine has different benefits and adverse effects according to tumors. The pr proposed chemotherapy is to eliminate the disease. Uh, to prevent the progress of disease and the cut of the complication arising uh, from the disease. Before the chemotherapy discussion is made, it's not sufficient to have the diagnostic made pathologically, uh, to be seen with the eye or to be detected radiological methods. After the pathological uh, diagnosis, some examination such as ultrasound, computers, tomography, uh, magnetic resonance imaging and PET CT, uh, bone scintigraphy, bone marrow examination should be performed in order to know the uh, extent of your disease. The follow up and treatment of the patient can be done in Sanko University Hospital uh, Medical Oncology and Clinical Chemotherapy Unit. Our patients who are examined our clinic can be evaluated with the 
requires blood and imaging tests, and their treatment can be applied in in a patient or outpatient chemotherapy unit. To support our uh, patient, we offer, offer multidisciplinary and combined treatment process, including oncological diagnosis and follow-up, chemotherapy, biotherapy, targeted therapy, immunotherapy, and personalized uh, treatment approach. Radioactive treatment in coordination with nuclear medicine clinic and algology polyclinic uh, because pain treatment. This hook and critical process handled by hook team Sanko University Hospital including all professional such as dietitian, uh, psychotherapist, physiologist, and uh, training nurses and uh, translators. If you have a question in the international focal point, the transplant coordinator and the uh, whole transplant team are available and uh, answer your question. Thank you, everyone. Ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thank to Professor Dr. Mustafa Yildirim from Sanko uh, University Hospitals of uh, talking about medical oncology. It was a short presentation, but it was efficient uh, in the future of our exhibition. Uh, uh, next exhibitions, I believe that we were going to have more um, uh, more detailed and uh, long version of uh, presentations, uh, hopefully. And uh, now we are going to uh, watch about 8.30 second, 8 minute 30 seconds videos of Turkish Healthcare Travel Council promotions. Everyone knows that Turkey is a great destination for holidays but it's also a rising star of healthcare services for international medical travelers. Over a million patients from all over the world choose Turkey for treatment and diagnostics every year. Turkey offers world-class medical services in state-of-the-art private hospitals and brand new PPP city hospitals. Turkey, the rising star destination for international healthcare travelers. Thanks to investments in the latest technology, talent, and infrastructure, Turkey today offers high-quality medical services to patients from all over the world. Orthopedic patients come to Turkey for a wide range of technologically advanced procedures, successfully performed by highly qualified Turkish doctors at a time to suit you. Turkey, the rising star destination for international healthcare travelers. The art of medicine is the heritage of Anatolia. You are in Turkey, the place where the first hospital of the world was founded and Hippocrates was born and grew up. In these lands, we treated the diseases with water, precious plants, and music. Our thousands of years of medical tradition reached a new level today with the advanced technology. But hospitality of Turkey and its air useful for both soul and body is still the same. Turkey attracts everybody by its nature, history, dynamic social life, as well as the best and most effective treatment possibilities since long time. With its high standard hospitals and doctors known around the world, 
Turkey maintains its specialty of being the center of health of the region since long time. Because Turkey is at the intersection points of its continents. It is located at the center of Europe, Balkans, Russian, Middle East, and North Africa. Approximately one billion people can arrive at Turkey only with a few hours flight. Turkish Airlines carries millions of people from 120 countries and 290 cities to Turkey by direct flights. There is a reason why so many people prefer Turkey because Turkey offers the newest technology treatment systems at the same time with the world. With its competitive price policy, it is among first choices of those who are looking for the top quality service with optimum prices. Turkey provides comfort with its high standard hospitals during healing process, with its hospitals having Center of Excellence Awards and Joint Commission Accreditation Certificates, it maintains its privileged place in the region. An experienced team with 724 specialist services and air ambulances works for satisfaction of the guests. Experienced Turkish doctors who break grounds all around the world, continues to control their patients after treatment. Thus, Turkey takes place on the top three in the world health tourism destinations. Turkey accommodates patients from 144 countries every year in the risky treatment and operations required high technology. It uses robotic surgery. Marrow, organ and stem cell transplantations are performed by awarded doctors through the latest technology. With innovative treatment systems such as inorganic organ production and transplantation, life-saving results are achieved. There is a progressive vision behind this success. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, the founder of Modern Republic of Turkey, started this vision by saying, entrust me to Turkish doctors. Today, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, president of the Republic, is still treated by Turkish doctors. Since the early years of the Republic, young doctors have completed their postgraduate education abroad. Turkish health sector has made a big progress with an investment of $30 billion in 15 promising successes in the treatment of common cancer and cardiovascular diseases. A complete healing is achieved in a short time by non-surgical treatments of the brain tumors. Children needing treatment in different branches such as blood diseases, marrow transplantation, heart surgery, brain tumors, etc. are also achieving health again in Turkey because the best treatment methods are applied with a smiling and kindly approach. Services allowing the children to have a pleasant time facilitate treatment processes. Children, our most precious existences, are deserving of this special attention. Also, there are many treatment alternatives for those who want to have children in Turkey. Couples are enjoying having children and growing their family with infertility treatment, advanced genetics applications, and in vitro fertilization methods.
Turkey is where the civilizations was born and continued. With its active city life, untouched nature and majestic history, Turkey transforms your treatment process into a comfortable and pleasant holiday. Three hundred seventy five member organizations, which adopted ethical principles of Turkish Health Care and Travel Council, work for happiness of the guests. We are at the intersection point of hearts and continents. Hope to see you soon. Right choice for your life. Turkey. Healing generations for centuries. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Thank you for being with us and thank you listening our webinars and following uh, all our uh, uh, presentations and uh, webinars and promotion videos of Turkish healthcare travel services and travel uh, possibilities. Uh, now we are moving to uh, Bodrum region. Bodrum is a province of Mula city where you can reach to Bodrum directly with direct flights or via Istanbul uh, every hour there is connection flights to Bodrum and also you can reach via Dalaman airport to Bodrum uh, almost the same uh, the same uh, routes but a little bit longer uh, the Dalaman airport but Bodrum has own airport and 20 minute time from airport, Milas airport, you can reach to CNG uh, spa and uh, wellness uh, well-being center. Now we are moving to Bodrum to listen about CNG well-being resort with wellness packages. And there will be two beautiful lady with us, Mrs. Jada and Mrs. Jeran will gonna do the presentation about CNG well-being Resort. Dear ladies, please, the floors are yours. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, we are uh, our hotel named CIG Wellbeing Resort, and uh, CIG inspired by Hanging Gardens of Babylon. And CIG Wellbeing is located in Kadıköy region of Bodrum, and CIG have special private uh, beach. And uh, we are in three kilometers from nearest town, which is named Turgus, Turgut Reis. And Bodrum City 22 kilometers, and airport is 49 kilometers far away. And uh, CIG is designed as a, a luxury suite. And uh, CIG offers a charming view and combination of pleasure and well being. And CIG is served all, the, all year with different concepts well-being, ultra inclusive concept, and bed and breakfast concept. And CIG is the first uh, thermal hotel uh, of Bodrum. And uh, thermal pool has uh, more than different 20 uh, different kinds of minerals, uh, calcium, magnesium, sodium, chlorus. Uh, and it has uh, 34 and 36 degrees. And very beneficial uh, for rheumatisms, for skin illnesses uh, for everything actually <laughs> so if you uh, have any question uh, could you please uh, sign the messages and uh, my colleague will continue now hello everyone my name is jaren uh, i am dietitian and nutritionist of cng uh, and uh, these are the slides um jada forgot to mention a little sorry. bit yeah sorry and these are our rooms yeah. Um, and these are the other yes. ones which are uh, located in the back side of the hotel. Um, they have very beautiful um, sun, sunrise view uh, with the, this full one. And um, yes, uh, I will mention about you 
uh, our health programs, uh, master detox, raw food detox, uh, anti-aging diet and ketogenic diet. The detox programs are our signature programs, you know. Um, detox is not just for cleaning your body and getting uh, out of your toxins from your body. And also it's kind of a fasting program. Uh, as you know, with the fasting, when your body in fasting state, your body uh, has more time to deal with toxins and uh, clean the liver and the kidneys. That's why we are using detox programs as a part of our health programs. And we prefer to combine them with uh, the proper uh, diet programs for the weight loss issue, for the healing, the relationship with the food. Uh, one of them is for the uh, healthy aging, anti-aging program. Uh, I will give a brief uh, introduction with every one of them, but another of them is the ketogenic diet, but it's a special kind of ketogenic diet. So uh, it's, uh, it's different than other programs. Uh, if someone who has a resistant weight issues uh, and uh, if they have lots of problems with uh, weight gain, uh, we use ket ketogenic program as a uh, solution. Uh, for them, and uh, there, there are some contradictions with ketogenic uh, diet program, but if our guest who, who, comes us, uh, who comes to me, first I do an uh, initial consultation, like a 45 minutes, uh, 50 minutes, and then uh, we decide which program is uh, available for them, and uh, what is uh, really, what they are going to get benefits, feel the benefits from the programs, we will decide together. And uh, we are um, um, uh, making it uh, with rich enriched with the uh, the spa treatments and the well-being treatments. So uh, we are uh, creating a roadmap together. And uh, what's our aim is to get rid of toxins or weight loss or uh, feeling good. Uh, yes, we are combining all of them. Uh, let me show you the. Uh, um, uh, basic instinct about uh, our uh, detox programs. Master detox program is a kind of juicing program, uh, very low calorie, like 800 kilocalories. Uh, and uh, during the day, you are getting all the things with um, shakes, wheatgrass juices, uh, spirulina. These are our superfoods mainly. Uh, we are making our shakes with uh, bentonite clay and psyllium husk. Bentonite clay is a very important uh, clay for uh, binding, it is binding the toxins in our body. And uh, with the help of uh, Angel of Water, we are getting rid of the toxins daily. Uh, daily. Uh, we call it colema. Uh, it's very, it's not invasive, very easy way to get rid of the toxins from your colon. And uh, these are the uh, the supplements we, uh, which we use in our master detox program. This is on the top uh, in the left side. Uh, you see the spiruna. We use the spiruna tablets in the morning time and uh, afternoon. Also, three tablets in the morning, three tablets in the afternoon. This is our bentonite clay. Uh, we use. I I told you, uh, bentonite clay is like a toxin magnet. Uh, it acts like a magnet in our body. And this is the uh, in the left column in the left side, um, uh, the wheatgrass juice. We, we are harvesting our own uh, wheatgrass in our hotel. We have a place, very close place. Um, we, uh, every day, freshly, we are cutting our uh, wheatgrass and we are uh, making a juice uh, from them freshly when our uh, client arrives. arrives. And this is the, uh, in the right column, you see uh, the green juice. Uh, we are serving lots of green juice in our program. You will see in the next slide. Um, so uh, we are making it with apples, a uh, little bit ginger, lemon juice, uh, olive oil, and all dark green vegetables. Yes. Uh, and during the day uh, with our detox programs, our guests can drink uh, alkaline water, detox broth, detox soup, 
and herbal tea varieties. Um, and uh, detox broth uh, is kind of a clear broth we are making with boiling all dark green um, vegetables and with some spices, anti-inflammatory spices. So during the day, uh, our client can uh, get benefit from four or five uh, cups per day. Herbal teas, uh, uh, instead of uh, coffee, we don't uh, um, provide coffee in, in our detox programs. Um, Instead of coffee, we, uh, we we want our guests to consume herbal teas because it they, it helps to the detoxification process of our body. And uh, at the end of the day, we are serving you a probiotic. Why we are uh, supporting you probiotic? We want to support your gut health. Plus, uh, because of the angel of water, um, we are losing both the good bacteria and the bad ones together. So we want to support the good ones, the good flora. Uh, that's why. And this is the full day program of our detox, master detox program. The day, as you see, the day starts at 8.30 with witchcraft juice and Sipilna tablets. At 9 o'clock, we have shake. At 11 o'clock, we have shake. Uh, at one o'clock, we have green juice and electrolyte drink. At four, uh, two o'clock, we have another shake. At three o'clock, we have wheat grass juice and spinach tablets. At five o'clock, another shake. And uh, you, you will have another green uh, juice and electrolyte drink. What is this electrolyte drink? Electrolyte drink is a mixture of Himalayan salt, uh, lemon juice, and alkaline water. Why we are serving this? Uh, because um, uh, when uh, when our client comes to us, uh, they uh, for the detoxification, we recommend uh, them to uh, uh, use the spa and sauna for to get rid of the um, sweat. I mean, by sweating the toxins from the skin directly, so they are losing the uh, both the electrolytes from their body. So we want to support the uh, electrolytes also in, from inside. Yes. That's why. And uh, we have another uh, detox program. Uh, why we are using raw food program? If someone who, who, the, who doesn't have any detox uh, experience before, raw food is a very good starter program for them. And it's very good for um, actually who is dealing with uh, to uh, consume vegetables and fruits. Uh, and we, we make vegetables and fruits very delicious and tasty. Everyone, everyone really enjoying with the raw food program because it's a full day eating program uh, with the lots of uh, superfoods and green juices. Um, uh, it's also our signature program because we have a raw food specialist chef and he's preparing lots of recipes with uh, vegetables and uh, with the nuts, nut family actually. Uh, they are making lots of sauces with um, avocado, cashew, flaxseed, we are making flaxseed crackers. They're all delicious. I tried all of them. And uh, what's the main reason for the raw food detox program? Yes, uh, it's unprocessed, uh, uncooked. Uh, there is nothing inside, just food. Um, and you know, uh, when uh, when people uh, eat, I mean, if uh, people, um, some people are uh, eating lots of processed foods. So if they want to stop to and uh, introduce their body with the real food, it's a very good program to start. And we are serving. Uh, uh, digestive enzymes with this program. Why? Because the, co uh, the program contains lots of fibers, more than 50 grams of fiber per day. That's why. Um, um, and uh, because of the effects of the uh, antioxidant property of the raw food detox uh, is very beneficial for our body because it contains lots of phytochemicals and antioxidant molecules inside. Um, and let me show you the uh, rest of the program. Yes, this is the, another shot from uh, by me. Uh, unfortunately, we, um, we can send you the professional our raw food progress, but it's from my uh, camera. I'm, I'm so sorry, um, but uh, um, the slide was very quick for me. And uh, it's just that I ate two days ago, I guess. Uh, as kind of hamburger with uh, flax seeds crackers and the uh, uh, pesto sauces and, and the cashew sauces inside. Uh, yes. And uh, as you see, the day starts with morning boost kind of juice. Uh, we use apple, ginger, lemon, and wheat grass juice and spilna tablets. Uh, we are serving you at nine, nine o'clock um, 
fruit salad. Uh, sometimes we are uh, serving with uh, almond milk also. Yes, this is the our program, Rogue program. And at, uh, at uh, 6.30, we are serving you green salads. Uh, every day, the green salad is changing. The sauces are changing. Everything is changing. And this is the another uh, shot from my camera. Uh, it's a raw spaghetti. It's very tasty and delicious with the sauces. Uh, and uh, in the back side, there, there, there is a uh, flaxseed cracker. And uh, I know uh, maybe it seems from the photograph it's le less, but it's because of the angle. Uh, it was very huge and it was very uh, satisfactory for me to, I felt, you know, full after I ate this as a lunch. And it's very nutritious. Let me talk about a little bit. Uh, my diet programs, anti-aging. Let's uh, start with anti-aging diet program. Why we call it anti-aging? Because uh, as you know, the World Health Organization and American Dietetic Associations, they are the uh, main authorities for the uh, deciding which is right, which is not right because of the uh, meta-analysis. And uh, a Mediterranean diet is the uh, most healthiest diet in the world now. And uh, we are, why we call it anti-aging? because the day starts with the anti-aging properties of a juice. We make apple, almond, ginger plus collagen juice together. Um, and we are adding some psyllium husk inside for the increasing the fiber amount of the uh, juice. And very balanced, very nutritious. Um, a, during the day, you are getting three meals and three snacks. Uh, I am arranging the uh, macros and micros, everything, uh, according to the client here after our consultation. Um, it's anti-inflammatory because of the, we use mostly raw materials. We use olive oil, turmeric, omega-3 fatty acids in the program, collagen, I told you, uh, as a bone broth and as a, like a very good brand of uh, collagen powder. And this is the uh, another shot from my phone. Uh, this is uh, the in the right side is the we call it lettuce burger, uh, low carb burger, and also it's very nutritious inside. I don't prefer to uh, serve red meat, but I prefer to serve the uh, uh, fish. As you know, we we are a Mediterranean country, so we mostly serve fish, and it's an exception for our uh, one of our uh, uh, lunch. And this is our. Uh, Go, um, artichoke with the uh, guacamole sauce uh, is another dinner option for, uh, I mean, it, it may give you inspiration to you what we are serving here. And this is another shot from my kitchen. Uh, it's the basil, cashew and olive oil uh, sauce uh, and a raw spaghetti with some cherry tomatoes. And this is the program uh, of us, um, anti-aging, uh, uh, Anti-aging uh, uh, diet program and the timetable, uh, breakfast, snacks, lunch, snacks, evening meal, and again, snacks. Snacks are uh, sometimes optional according, I am arranging according to client, uh, according to the color need. Uh, the alkaline water, detox growth, and herbal teas are allowed. And um, actually, um, you know, our guests who comes here has a coffee addiction or something. I gave just one coffee per day in this program, according to the clients. Uh, we are doing everything here in client based according to their health. Uh, so every every day we are together with them in the lunch, dinners, every 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 moment we are talking. We are giving some uh, raw food workshops. We are making. Ex uh, we are doing some uh, life uh, life transition seminars together. We are watching movie, movies together the about the healthy life. And um, yes, let me talk about a little bit uh, other another signature program because this ketogenic program is very special to CNG because uh, when we look to uh, all over the world, they are doing um, the ketogenic program, very animal uh, animal fat based. Uh, this program is plant plant oil. I mean, oil based, healthy oil based program. But it's also very uh, satisfactory because it's very fulfilling, and, uh, and our guests are consuming lots of fiber during the program. So it's not 
just an ordinary ketogenic program. It's very different. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't put some uh, photographs in the uh, slides. Uh, I will show you later, but uh, I can send you the detailed information uh, to your email uh, as is in different slides. Um, yes. A uh, ketogenic diet is a kind of diet which limits the carbohydrate uh, consumption like under 50 grams. Um, yeah, yes, uh, I am arranging the uh, all macros uh, when in our consultation, but no breads, no legumes, um, uh, just a small amount of fruits are allowed like strawberry, uh, berry family, um, raspberry, blueberry, I am serving and we are making lots of deserts with the uh, uh, with some in ingredients, almond flour with or coconut flour. We are making lots of different recipes with them. Um, I can send another, I told you, uh, another Word document or PowerPoint. Uh, it's the meal schedule for, uh, for the guests. Yes, breakfast, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, snack, yes. Uh, the snacks are optional because the, uh, the main meal is very satisfactory. They don't need to uh, take the snack sometimes, but they are optional. Uh, what is the main purpose of this program? I want my guests to stay at least 14 nights this program because it's, we see the results in long term, uh, but uh, very quickly, long term, but very quickly uh, from the first day. Because um, yes, uh, the body is getting into the ketosis state like three or four, four days and basically uh, burning the fat very suddenly and you know, very efficiently, uh, who has a carbohydrate craving issue, and they are beating the carbohydrate craving uh, uh, issue with this program also. Um, and what we do here also, we do the ketone test for them. When we start the program after a few days later, we, uh, we do this ketone test together to check their ketone level. And um, the, uh, during the day, alkaline water detox, Detox growth and herbal teas are also uh, served in the abundance. But um, as, as I told you, uh, the initial consultation is very important, uh, me with, and the client, because uh, according to their health status, if they have type, type, type 1 diabetes or chronic liver disease or kidney disorders, we are deciding to do different things in here, except from the ketogenic diet. According to the health issue, I uh, recommend specific things, treatments from our center. Uh, we use thermal water for uh, the um, enhancing the program. And also we use some treatments, some massages here, some uh, other special treatments, uh, pressotherapy, ozone sauna, infrared sauna. We are combining all of them for, uh, uh, according to our aim for weight loss or liver cleans, whatever. Um, so uh, for the further questions, I will be on your service. You can send me an email. I can answer them. Um, and also I can share with you if you want uh, some uh, ketogenic recipes or also uh, the um, uh, photographs from CNG. Yes, nice to meet you. Uh, and thank you for, uh, for the slide. Well, thank you very much, Mrs. Uh, Jada and Mrs. Jeren. Uh, was very informative information about your uh, healthcare and well-being uh, treatment that you are uh, progressing and uh, uh, providing to your visitors, to your guests. Uh, I'm one of the uh, guests which I experienced in your uh, in your research uh, about uh, close to seven years now, before seven years, when you just started as uh, Garden of Babylons before the name changes, uh, I was one of the first guests who experienced with our buyers and visitors. And uh, of course, the location of uh, CNG Reserve in Bodrum, uh, just in the in the seaside and with a very nice environment and uh, as well as a very clean sea, uh, getting the uh, detox and uh, uh, well-being treatments and wellness and spa, and also swimming, getting sea and sun, uh, experiencing uh, the, the clean 
uh, turquoise sea and uh, and uh, a nice sun of of uh, Bodrum. Uh, I think uh, CNG, one of the leading uh, spa and well-being resorts in Bodrum, uh, providing this kind of uh, services. And I believe that uh, from now on, uh, we will promote more uh, your uh, resort in our online uh, exhibitions and webinars in order to attract you more uh, guests from international uh, countries and from uh, other countries to you that uh, you can able to experience a different uh, nationality uh, treatment as well. So uh, thank you very much for the uh, uh, for the presentation. Very, it was very informative and it was very nice, uh, actually. And uh, we will keep uh, in touch. And also, we uh, recommend you to uh, send request uh, meeting request to the visitors who are interested to meet and to talk about your uh, resort in order to build your partnership. Well, we are uh, moving to next uh, webinars uh, presentations uh, from Kolan Hospital Groups. Kolan Hospital Groups is based in Istanbul, but they have also two hospital IVF centers and hospitals in North Cyprus, Turkish North Cyprus. They have two more hospitals over there as well. And uh, today we are going to have uh, we are going to have uh, also presentation from. IVF centers from uh, North Cyprus, Turkish North Cyprus. Uh, they were going to talk about the possibility of IVF and fertility uh, treatments in, in Cyprus. And Colon has also uh, uh, hospitals in, in Cyprus as well. So we are going to listen to Professor Dr. Suleyman Lutfi Dincher about homotology. So what is the news and development in homotology? Let's leave the floor to Professor Suleiman, please go ahead, Professor. I am Dr. Suleiman from Colon International Hospital and bone marrow transplanter and hematologist. We have good hospital and A plus hospital uh, in Istanbul. In bone marrow transplant unit, every time need. Uh, a plus hospital. A plus hospital is a plus hospital necessary in all clinic situation, all laboratory examination needed. Uh, who need for the transplantation in Turkey uh, indication? Patient by, with a diagnosis of the acute and chronic leukemia, lymphoma, multiple myeloma, some solid tumor or cancer, aplastic anemia, myelodysplastic syndrome, and thalassemia, and some other metabolic disorders, other uh, treatment refractor diseases. Bone marrow trans during the bone marrow transplantation, all the bone marrow transplant patient necessary evaluated and full lab and body examination. And also allergen transplanters transplantation needed HLA examination. If it is suitable for the transplantation and all this transfer, this situation patient is informed about the procedure to be performed and chose for the transplant patients. In our hospital, bone marrow transplant unit is do all transplantation procedure, generally for Turkish citizen and foreign national. And besides the transplant success rate, we are and 97% uh, is big, answer for yours is success rate is very good for us and for, for the world. Uh, how can I get the stem cell and which one uh, source we, uh, do we use it? And uh, stem cell collection 
And uh, how do I uh, get the stem cell? And firstly, in autologous and allergenic and syngenic from the brother and sister, and unrelated and uh, mismatch and haplogenetic transplantation, and sometimes refractor patients needed CAR T cell treatment. And the experiment, experimental side, and sometimes we use it stem cell engineering for uh, mesenchymal stem cell transplantation and dendritic cell transplantation, mostly for the GVHD, the most uh, GVHD, grad versus host disease procedure. Uh, which one we, do we use this uh, source for the stem cell? 100% uh, and bone marrow, directly uh, collecting bone marrow. And mostly we use the peripheric blood cell. And uh, from the bone marrow bank, cord blood, and from the lab, embryonic stem cell, and fatal liver and fatal bone marrow, all of these experimental uh, situation for the laboratory. This is hemopoietic stem cell chart and cascade for the uh, primary stem cell and, and after ended uh, neutrophil, thrombocyte, and erythrocyte. You know this mostly. I know that the stem cell is uh, transform the somatic stem cell. For example, the, for example, for the stomach, so, uh, somatic stem cell and dermatologic stem cell and enterocyte and fatty cell and uh, chondrocyte, endothelial cell, neuronal cell, astrocyte and liver cell, etc. We know this. Stem cell transform all somatic cell. Uh, perfect stem cell, we use the mostly perfect stem cell in for bone marrow. Uh, normally, it's in bone marrow side, uh, stem cell is one, uh, 101% for the uh, bone marrow. And perfect stem cell, 1,001 uh, perfect stem cell, we have it all this body. Uh, for the autologous stem cell collection, and we needed mobilization. For the mobilization, we use this chemotherapy cytokine in autologous transplantation patients. Uh, after mobilization time, approximately 10 and 15 days, uh, collecting peripheric stem cell, collect, collecting for, for peripheric stem cell by the locophoresis and aphoresis machine. This is uh, aphoresis machine and set and aphoresis bed. This area is aphoresis area. Bone marrow transplantation, mostly autologous, allergenic, the subtype, myoablative, non-myoablative, and unrelated, we say that. And you know this, uh, many internet sites uh, comment this experimental stem cell transplantation. And uh, maybe next time, next 20 and 10 years after, Maybe spare part, use it. In allergen transplantation, for example, first we will uh, start TBI or some chemo approximately three days, 10 days, sometimes 15 days, and started minus 10, minus seven, etc. like this 
uh, table. Zero day is transplanted day. For the allergen transplantation, uh, we, on the other side, uh, we will prepare some donor, brother and sister, and other donor, allergenic and unrelated donor. We need it, uh, prepare, to prepare uh, for the stem cell. Autologous transplant, and if he if he patient if he needed if if the patient needed chemo and uh, started chemo and cytokine, sometimes rem in the remission uh, for the autologous transplantation only we use cytokine. This table is chemo plus cytokine. And uh, approximately chemo and cytokine 50, after 15 days, uh, we collect. And uh, after the only one uh, cytokine, we, we, uh, if, if I use this, uh, after five days, we collect stem cell. In summary, hem hemopoietic stem cell transplantation clinical indication. Hematologic diseases, all malign and some benign hematologic uh, diseases. And myeloproliferative patients, acute leukemia, chronic leukemia, many patients for the hematologic diseases, if it is malignant side. And solid tumor, mostly we use uh, solid tumor and refract some refractor uh, patients needed CAR T cell treatment. Some childhood solid tumor. Uh, you know this con congenital immune deficiency status situation, and some metabolic diseases like uh, uh, Gaucher diseases, uh, mostly major hemoglobinopathy and some automotive, uh, autoimmune diseases, for example, systemic lupus erythematosus and some antiphospholytic syndrome in for the treatment, refractor, uh, to, uh, to, refractor to the treatment for automotive, uh, autoimmune diseases. And other, these experimental ones, maybe every time change this situation, and some neurologic diseases, some other diseases. Uh, this is, is a very uh, good situation. Uh, sometimes we collected apparatus product for the autologous transplantation, some, sometimes allergen transplantation, uh, uh, some special site, this is, is this, this area is uh, collecting, collecting stem cell and uh, storage. Uh, we uh, send the storage area. In the storage area, in, 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 in you know this uh, stem cell, uh, four centigrade is 72 hours storage. Only 72, but in the, uh, Liquid nitrogen is uh, endless. In this area is uh, liquid nitrogen area. Cell engineering, all experimental area for the stem cell. Uh, sometimes uh, some people use this ischemic heart diseases, perfect, some patient, refractor patient is peripheral vascular diseases, some neurologic diseases. You know that this area all now experimental. And oncologic disease as well, some treatment restriction we have, but more vaccine and CAR T cell treatment, now we use this, some refractor oncologic patients. Uh, maybe you know, maybe 
Maybe next time in 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 uh, ten years, after ten years, twenty years, I don't know now, but is very quick procedure and very quickly uh, follow it. And stem cell and the spare part, you know this is. Uh, uh, 1980 is bone marrow transplantation, say experimental, but is now classical treatment. Maybe after 10 years, stem cell is may make spare part. Okay. Thank you for joining us. If any question, please ask. Uh, the center and email, etc. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, would like to thanks to Professor Suleiman Lutfi Dinshar for his uh, very detailed uh, information that he have shared uh, and uh, the technology and technique that they are. Uh, progressing in hematology. Uh, we are really delightful and grateful that we have such uh, doctors and professor in our country that they are helping people who are suffering from bone marrow diseases and bone marrow transplantation, which is one of the harming disease, uh, which need to be carefully uh, treated, uh, actually. So now we are uh, going to uh, Dr. Bekir Sutka Aslan from Ankara. Uh, he is an eye surgeon, a very well-known eye surgeon in Turkey, and he will going to talk about femto laser assisted cataract surgery with digital navigation. Dr. Bekir Sutka, floors are yours. technological achievements ch just changed our understanding of how we are going to operate. So let's let me share my screen with you and right. then proceed accordingly. Lovely. Excuse me, just a moment, please. Stop video participants. Excellent. More sound optimize. Excellent. Okay. Well, uh, uh, this is our hospital view, and uh, uh, my email is below. The name of the hospital is Ankara Memorial Hospital, and I'm going to speak about my experience with femtolaser assisted cataract surgery with the digital navigation. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, let's move ahead. Okay, can we? Can we reach refractive goals in cataract surgery? This is a basic question I'm going to discuss with you through the whole presentation. There are two answers. If yes, then how are we going to achieve a refractive goal that will make patients very happy? And if no, then why we cannot do this to our patients? This is crucial. We cannot reach our the goal in refractive cataract surgery in general, due to residual refractive errors, inflammation, and ocular surface problems. We know that these issues should be solved so that we can have a very good, reliable result that will make both the surgeon and the patient very happy. At World Health Organization's website gave us, gives us a clue about what's going on all around the world. And the refractive solutions are offered to less than 15% of cataract surgery patients, according to World Health Organization. Less than 3% of all cataract surgeries are performed as femtocataract. All over the world, only 13% of cataract cases can get treatment they need. So it seems as though we are far from perfect. In the Eureka, which is an organization carried out by European society, Eureka registration system gives us an idea about 1 million cases 
operated by the European surgeons. 70% of eyes showed one diopter deviation. Refractive deviation is higher, especially in short eyes. Among 17% of cases in 70,000, almost 7,500 patients with coronary astigmatism, metropia was targeted in 78% of the eyes. However, it could not be achieved in 52% of the cases. In 43% of cases, one diopter or less astigmatism was detected. So, in summary, we are really very far from perfect. So, what we need? Advanced precision surgery with manual applications nowadays is not feasible. You have to do biometry, transcription, planning, marking, cyclotorsion, surgical induced astigmatism. You have to consider surgical induced astigmatism. You have to do a very well centered very well-centered and good overlapping capsule axis, and you have to position the eye well, and you have to optimize the outcome. These are the points when you perform a manual surgery. These are the points, potential points of failure in this process. So there are so many unknowns. Those should be carried out, and you must be very pre precise. So we have to mention briefly what the limitations in classical cataract surgery are. Security is 10 times less than the LASIK surgery. Predictability of the results are half of the less predictability. Distance trajectory is half of the predictability of LASIK surgery. Astigmatism correction is limited. Presbyopia correction is limited. Effective IOL detection is almost impossible when you are doing a classical cataract surgery. So there are a few points that I have to mention about why there are limitations. First of all, when you're performing corneal incision, uh, the classical surgery is not optimized and it has an impact on the induced cylinder and the safety is or another crucial point that I have to mention. Capsulexis with the current surgery is variable sized, not centered well. This has an impact of variable IOL position and effective lens foot power. Lens fragmentation is the third part, which has an effect on the final outcome An excessive ultrasound power, delayed visual recovery, and loss of endo cells and capsule rupture should be the key words to be mentioned. Refractive cataract surgery has certain steps. You have to prepare the patient with biometry, ocular surface evaluation, information control, and you have to check for the systemic problems of the patient, namely prostate, diabetes, hypertension, and many others. Intraocular lens selection are variable and you can choose between single to three piece lenses to monovision to multifocality. Surgical technique depends on extra capsular surgery depending on the patient's eye and mainly extra capsular cataract phaco, femtophaco or femtophaco plus virion supported femtophaco may be the choice. Post-op treatment and follow-up of because cases should be very precisely carried out. Surgical preparation, ocular biometry, and of course, the back of the eye fundus preparation are the crucial parts of the surgery. We nearly always perform a corneal tomography. We nearly always perform an OCT of the macula and sometimes we perform the OCT of the disc. And we take our biometric measurements with the last star with the newest uh, software. In, in the past, we knew that corneal, posterior corneal astigmatism has an effect on the final outcome. Unfortunately, with the shine fluke technology, posterior radius of the curvature cannot be measured accurately in all conditions. This is a deprivation of the outcome. 
So we, we are using Barrett Torque Calculator to get hold of the best option to treat astigmatism and of course, best power to put into the eye. When you are going to put this lens in the eye, you need some surgical tools to find out, to find out whether you are putting this lens correctly into position. And you need a kind of surgical guide. And this surgical guide in our case is Varian image guided system. It not only helps us to put the lens just in, on the visual axis, but it also helps us to put the lens, if there is a toric one, on the correct visual axis. Well, I will, I'm very proud to share this picture with you. The first interval lens for the treatment of cataract was implanted by Sir Harold Ridley at St. Thomas Hospital on the 8th of February, 1950. And this picture is in Denmark in 1987 and Harold Ridley is accompanied by myself. And I always take this picture as a, a honor of knowing Mr. Harold Ridley. So Mr. Harold Ridley introduced us the first IOL and since then we have a bunch of intraocular lenses starting with the foldable ones, adding filters, adding toric correction, and adding also multifocality. And nowadays, of course, accommodation is another fruitful uh, approach that we can see in the very near future what we are going to get. There are certain lenses that are in the market that may help us to see both near, intermediate distance, and distance. There are lots of them and we just choose the best one, the best option, to, depending on the uh, diagnostic outcome of the specific patient. We do not implant one lens to everybody, but we choose the correct lens so that it will fit to that person's eye so that the patient can get a very good visual outcome. It may be Intercular selection may be, as I said, one, one piece. We can have a monovision outcome, or you can use a multifocal lens, as you see here. Recent meta-analysis of peer-reviewed publications revealed evidence of high levels of patient satisfaction in general. The spectacle independent was 80% or more, 90% of for distance vision, 100% for intermediate vision, and 70% for near vision. This is an outstanding outcome with the present lenses if they are chosen correctly for the specific patient. Of course, this picture shows us what, we are, what kind of vision at the end of the day the patient will get. And we just describe this patient and also we get feedback from the patient how the patient may benefit from the, from the implantation of this lens. Nowadays, we are using a new technology called Vivier Visual Behavior Monitor. This Vivier Monitor is a fully documents the way one uses the real world visual system. We put this system on the patient with the eyeglasses on the patient's eye and try to find out how the patient is using his or her eye during the day. And in this slide, a defocus curve graph left here in the left shows that this patient performs most of his visual tasks by imaging distance between 0.4 to one meters. So this is also in the right. We see that um, this patient uh, also has 61% uh, uh, of the patient's vision occurs in good lighting conditions and 70% in the mesopic conditions and 22% under scotopic conditions. In this patient, if a monofocal IOL is implanted targeting a metropia, and then he will not use glasses for 8% of the day and will require glasses for the medium 
and closed us for 90% of the day. So at the end of the day, even if you do a perfect surgery with a monofocal IOL and with an emetropia target, still this patient will not benefit from the surgery as it is, it is expected. Well, I will now switch again to brilliant image guided system that really eliminates the potential errors in surgical st steps. We take the patient's image with accurate biometry and auto data uploading. We plan the surgery. And after the planning, we have another unit in the operating theater that will guide us to make capture X construction, IOL positioning, surgical optimization. So this result-oriented surgery comes out with outstanding outcomes. Variant surgical planner, this is the picture you get first. You make your decision where you're going to put your incisions, where you are going to, if you're going to correct astigmatism by corneal incisions. And of course, it also evaluates the corneal astigmatism, which is a very good benefit. And this is the digital marker in the operating theater. This operating theater in the, in the digital marker, you get the patient on the bed and you adjust where you are going to sit. And then you just make your uh, locations of the incisions. And apparently you have this size of the capstrixes that's shown here. And you, you decide your way of centration whether it will be on visual axis or with limbus, whatever it is, it's your, up to your decision. So, and then this is the picture on the patient side. We have this kind of appearance and this shows where the incisions are. These are the landmarks where you are going to have the surgery. So, and at the end of the surgery, Berion shows us exactly where we are going to put this lens with regard to centration, plus the axis of the lens is going to be plotted. Well, what is new then? Is it really worth? Berion Digital Surgery Guide femtosecond Laser Technology reduces error rates and allows surgery in sharp margins. This improves clinical outcomes, which is very, very important. And apparently, you can get extremely sensitive corneal incisions, cups to exist, nuclear fragmentation, intercular lens placement. And, but of course, this technology has some drawbacks, financial problems, long learning curve, and complication that could threaten the vision. This is a system we are using. This is a lens X system. They get the picture here and we evaluate the patient's eye and then we execute. Another point that you have to mention is active fluidix. Active fluidix is something that we are using with the Centurion FACO device. The question was, can we keep the anterior chamber stable? Can it help control inflammation? Yes, if you don't keep the anterior chamber stable, you cannot keep the you cannot have a full control on the final inflammation control. So fluid control, active fluidics system just match to each other so that you can have a very stable anterior chamber and the final outcome of the surgery becomes brilliant. Nowadays, we are using another tool called active sentry where the anterior chamber maintenance is controlled via sensors at the handpiece. As the incision becomes smaller, fluid flow into the eye is limited even if FACO parameters are modified. This reduces the surgical efficiency. So in a gravity system, in, the, in many of these surgical systems, FACO systems, the higher the bottle raise, the higher the intercular pressure will become. And the risk of performing FACO at higher intercular pressure you will definitely get endothelial cell damage, optic nerve damage, deterioration of retinal perfusion, and 
you are operating, if you put your bottle at a height of 100 centimeters, you are operating under a pressure of 74 millimeters of mercury, which is unbelievably high. So with a femtosecond nuclear fragmentation, you can effectively dis disassemble the nucleus, protect the posterior capsule, and apparently you can control the phaco time and corneal endothelium. Femtosecond nuclear fragmentation safety is simply because you are decreasing the phaco energy, reducing the phaco time, less endothelial cell damage, and may reduce potential for inflammation and corneal burns. This is how we are executing the surgery. We are, with the variant planner, we make our decision how we are going to make the surgery. Now we are putting our, uh, we are putting our incision. Now it's the capsule uh, real time OCT. We uh, just find out whether our target is okay. Now this is the real time OCT of the lens and we adjust where we are going to fragment. And in this case, we plan to make limbal relaxing incisions and we adjust also that one. And here we are now adjusting the incision Now, we put the incision at the desired place and also the limbal relaxing incision is localized properly. When we set everything properly, then Okay, we set it every bit some pieces. It's now over. Now let's see what's happening when we adjust. The capsule axis is made. Now the fragmentation is carried out. And astigmatic incisions are made. And finally, the incision we are going to enter, the eye is prepared. Now the treatment is complete. And this is, these are the parameters we are using to remove the fragmented material. And this is this case I will show share with you how we are putting a lens that has both toric capacity and multifocality. We remove all the viscoelastic from the anterior surface of the lens and posterior surface of the lens. And we remove all the viscoelastic and then we put the lens as you see there are marks on the lens we put this on in accordance with the line Varian is showing us we call this a digital digital navigation system So, if you are performing a manual surgery, we call this test a point spread function test. And we take also make a multi uh, uh, point spread function test and MTF values of this test, uh, the graphics of the MTF values are clearly seen. And with a manual test, the patient sees like this. And with the laser, with the same lens, the patient has a visual acuity like this. 
which is more controlled, more precise. And modulation transfer function test also graphic shows us a very smooth, very smooth graphics that shows us that the patient has a very good outcome. Treatment is also crucial and you have to use good antibiotics, non steroid anti-inflammatoires, and steroids to achieve good refractive results for three weeks. Refractive cataract surgery, there has always been discussions whether to switch to Ikke to Ikke, Ikke to Beko, uh, and many other technologies always have some kind of resistance. Now, FECO to variant guided femtofeco is the choice. To improve is to change. To be perfect is the change often, says Winston Churchill. So finally, I would, I would like to summarize what I'm telling you. One careful and individualized selection based on pre-existing conditions, visual needs, realistic expectations. This is our Dogma, we follow these rules nearly in all cases. On the knowledge of different optical designs, visual performances of multiple eye oils, proper surgical technique, and eventual complicated management is our criteria to follow to do a very good surgery so that the patient expectations are reached. I would like to thank you very much and I would like to send my greetings from Ankara. My email is as follow, BSA. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to thanks to Dr. Bekir Sitkarslan from Ankara. He's a well-known uh, ophthalmologist and uh, eye surgeon uh, in Turkey and also in the world. So he has given very, very detailed uh, information and shared uh, the presentation with presentation, the methods of surgeries for uh, cataract surgery uh, with uh, laser assisted uh, and uh, digital navigation. So it was very informative about eye surgery methods and new technologies. Now we are going to Corel Thermal, which is one of our member of Thermal Resorts in Afyon City. As I said, that Afyon City has a Zafer Airport nearby, about 20-25 minutes away from Corel uh, Thermal. So you can have uh, transit uh, Istanbul or Sabiha Gökçen. You can reach to uh, Afyon City and arrive to Corel Thermal and you can get spa and wellness and thermal uh, waters, hot waters, and some uh, assisted treatment by physiotherapy and rehabilitation as well. Let me introduce Mrs. Aisha Tunç, the guest relation uh, managers of Coral Thermal. She will gonna do eight minutes of presentation about Coral Thermal. Please go ahead, Mrs. Aisha. Uh, hi to everyone. Uh, I'm Ayşe uh, from uh, guest uh, from Coral Thermal Resort Clinic and Spa Hotel. Uh, now I start my presentation. Uh, our hotel is Coral uh, Thermal Resort Hotel, Health Hotel of Turkey. It was opened in September uh, 2016. It is located at the inter intersection point of Ankara, Izmir, Istanbul, and Antalya, 13 kilometers away from Afyon City Center. Uh, uh, 120,000s uh, square meters open area and uh, 15,000 square meters closed area, 45 kilometers away from Zafar Airport. Uh, Coral Thermal has uh, 329 rooms and uh, 668 beds. And there are nine types of rooms. Uh, 
Uh, this is standard room. This is corner seat room. Terrace suite is our family room. Junior suite. Um, entertainment and animation. Uh, animation shows uh, in night and day, live music, billiards, uh, table tennis, bowling, gym, vitamin bar, country house, uh, children's club, arcade, shopping stores, what, water slides, children's pools, lobby bar, tea time, library and games rooms. It's designed to make the most of your leisure time. Plant wellness, two outdoor swimming pools, women and mixed area for indoor, indoor swimming pools, for thermal pools, for spa treatments, children's pool, water slice, gym, aromatherapy center, and uh, uh, provide family bed. This is our spa centers. And we, made, uh, we make mud bed, plant bed, hydrators, ozone cabin, climbing cures, and aromatherapy centers, uh, therapic vegetable flower oils, treatmental and uh, physical imbalances, pro protect the health of and of the body. Uh, aromatherapy is a natural product, relaxes, freshness, nourish, nourishes the skin, helps treatment. Uh, our hotels, uh, the most uh, important uh, department is physical therapy and rehabilitation center. Uh, the Jean's Health Complex consisting of spent clinic is uh, built on an area of 4,000 uh, meters square meters. Specialists, physiotherapists, and nurses make miraculous treatments with the magical power of the thermal water. Uh, these are some of the latest traits in our clinic, especially rheumatic diseases and move, uh, movements, the sources, loss of body, body functions, especially orthopedic rehabilitation, neurologic rehabilitation, hand rehabilitation. Uh, these, this rehabilitation after hand Insures and or operations, reputations for spastic disabled children and for uh, sports injured. This machine is high back isokinetic unit. Uh, muscle uh, weaknesses are detected and treated with isokinetic uh, exercise system. Uh, the isokinetic exercise system is used in joints, contracts, frozen shoulder after orthopedic surgery and in sports injuries. And uh, decompression therapy, the world state of the art spinal, uh, spinal decompression traction device provides uh, percent 89 success in the non-surgical treatment of waist and neck hernia. Yeah, it cures back, waist and neck pains by uh, reducing the pressure on the body. And ozone cure uh, by strengthening the immune system, headache, uh, dyspnea, and migraine, in chronic uh, fatigue, fatigue syndrome and fibromyalgia, uh, asthma, allergy, bronchitis, diabetes, and circulatory system diseases. And as a complementary treatment for many diseases. Uh, ozone cure is a um, painkiller effect for all um, problems. And uh, PRP, uh, it means uh, platelet rich plasma. Uh, PRP therapy is a new method that has been used especially in the treatment of various diseases in recent years. Uh, the material used is the method of repeat from the patient's own blood. It is a natural treatment method in which diseases is uh, PRP used. Calcification, arthrosis, any kind of car uh, cartilage damage, 
any kind of tendon damage, uh, such as tennis elbow, in chronic wound healing, cosmetic applications, dental implants, uh, cardiovascular surgeon, and uh, the other departments of our hotels. There is a main restaurant, one a la carte restaurant, five bars, lobby bar, vitamin bar, orient cafe, cottage, similar banquet and conference rooms. Here is the, our meeting rooms, equ equipment with the license technology banquet area features. This is in G salon for um, 1,200 people. At left, left side is uh, Amber salon for uh, nine people, 900 people. Crystal salon, uh, 550 people. And the meeting rooms are equipment with uh, eight advanced technology products and are designed with different options from 50 to uh, 400 pers people. They are ideal for all organizations. Yes, finished. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mrs. Aisha Tunch from Coral Thermal about uh, presentation doing for uh, Coral Thermal Resort from Afyon uh, region. Uh, as I said, and as I mentioned that Afyon city is uh, one hour flight away from Istanbul. So you can connect easily in the morning or noon or afternoon flights from Istanbul to uh, Afyon uh, Zafer airport and from there uh, Coral Thermal team will pick you up and will transfer you to their uh, thermal resort. And as you can see, it is not only thermal resort, but also there is some other physiotherapy and rehabilitation and other treatment, uh, alternative treatments, which they are proposing and uh, offering together with their thermal hot spring water. So I experienced a lot of time in Coral Thermal for refreshing, anti-aging and uh, uh, anti-setting uh, your body and mind. Uh, I think it's very, it was very helpful and it was very nice experience for me. Uh, and I recommend everyone to experience the same uh, method of alternative treatments in Coral Thermal, one of the best uh, thermal resorts, member of THTC. Thank you very much, Mrs. Aisha, for the uh, presentation. Now we are connecting to Cyprus, Turkish Cyprus, Turkish North Cyprus. Uh, as uh, you may know, it's famous destination for tourism, as well as famous destination for healthcare travel uh, and treatments for IVF. Especially IVF treatments are well uh, known uh, in, in Cyprus and they do treat a lot of thousands of patients from international, uh, from other countries uh, receiving to North Cyprus and treating them in latest uh, hospitals and investments which they have done in Cyprus. And uh, Cyprus is a member of Turkish Healthcare Travel Council and member of Global Healthcare Travel Council as Cyprus uh, Global Healthcare Travel uh, Council. So they are representative in the globally and as well as represented in our council uh, and Turkish Cyprus, North Cyprus, uh, ready to welcome all IVF requirement and requests from all over the world, especially at this time from Balkan region. And they will be with us all uh, next uh, uh, one year in 10 regional online exhibitions uh, and we were going to promote all together uh, North Cyprus, especially in IVF treatments. I would like to leave the floor and the stage to Dr. Ahmed Özyit, uh, which is going to talk about IVF treatments in North Cyprus and the possibilities and what is the rules and regulations for fertility treatments. Uh, Dr. Ahmed, floors are yours.
Thank you. Thank you so much for this wonderful um, introduction. I actually have nothing else to add, so I can close now. <laughs> um, thank you so much. Um, well, I'm here to talk about um, fertility treatments in Cyprus in general. Um, today is going to be like a um, little bit of an introduction of what we do, why um, choose North Cyprus as a destination for fertility treatments. And I will just share some information about uh, what we do here and um, what kind of treatments we offer and so on and so forth. But today I'm not going to go into detail of any sort of treatment. I've reserved that for our next uh, talks because we're going to have to, we're going to have a series of talks with you guys. So um, what I've done is I've prepared some PowerPoint presentations for those talks as well, where I'll be talking about specific treatments, for example, stem cell therapy and fertility or PRP treatments. Uh, Aisha uh, from the Thermal Resort just talked about PRP treatments and the applications that they offer. And we do offer PRP treatments in, in, in the fertility field as well. And it's one of the up and coming treatments in the fertility, uh, fertility sector. So I will talk about uh, different types of treatments, some out of the box treatments as well. But today um, I will just go ahead and introduce um, Cy Northern Cyprus as a medical tourism hotspot. And um, in terms of fertility uh, treatments, what we offer uh, and why uh, North Cyprus is actually a um, hotspot, why it's a preferred uh, destination. Uh, I would like to talk about those. So I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen so that uh, the presentation can be seen by everybody. Are you able to see this? Yes, we do. Go ahead. Okay, perfect. So as I said, today is just a um, very brief introduction in terms of what we do here in Northern Cyprus. I've prepared this very, very short, brief um, PowerPoint presentation, and I will uh, just go ahead and uh, talk about the basics. My name is Ahmed, and I'm one of the physicians at the Elite Research and uh, Surgical Hospital in North Cyprus. We're associated with the Cyprus Healthcare Council. And this is the first time I'm actually um, uh, representing um, us in uh, in this platform. So this will be a first for me. So I'm happy to be here. And just to give you some background information about uh, fertility treatments in North Cyprus. Um, uh, our hospital uh, was the first hospital to introduce IVF treatments, introduce fertility treatments in Cyprus. And that was back in 2001. Uh, I was not a physician back then, too young for that. <laughs> but um, we opened up in 2001 and we've been offering uh, fertility treatments since 2001. So it's been 20 years, 20 plus years of experience. And a large proportion of that is uh, to cater international patients. So we've been a very active participant of the global medical tourism in the field um, for over 20 years. So that's, you know, that's, that grows every single year. And one of the main attractions of Northern Cyprus in terms of coming, to, coming for IVF treatments is the ease of travel because we do not have very strict visa requirements and it's relatively easier for people from the Middle East, from the Balkan region and to uh, travel to Northern part of Cyprus because we're not in the Schengen region and, you know, like, like the US or the EU, we don't require strict um, visa uh, requirements. So it is relatively easier to fly out to Cyprus, Northern Cyprus and um, come for treatment or make a, tra make a vacation out of it. And obviously one of the benefits is that it's sunny all year round. It's actually too sunny in August. So if you're planning on coming in August, think again, but otherwise the rest of the time in Cyprus, in, in Northern Cyprus is beautiful. It's a very good vacation spot as well. So that's one of the benefits um, for people because when you're traveling for treatment, it can be very stressful. It can be overwhelming, but at the same time, if you're able to combine it with um, some sort of a holiday time, vacation time, it's something that, that, that makes it more tempting. It, it helps you relax a little bit, um, just like that beautiful thermal resort that we just saw. Um, you know, like there are 
a lot of um, nice accommodation options here as well. So people do travel here for holidays. So if you get to experience that as well, you know, mix uh, combine it with treatment, that's something that helps you relax while receiving this treatment because fertility treatments are, um, they involve hormones, they involve a lot of things. So it's like an emotional roller coaster because maybe you've been trying to uh, conceive for some time and you've been unable to do so. Maybe you've received a number of treatments pr previously and they just all failed. So you're flying out to a new destination. You're flying out internationally to receive this overwhelming treatment. And it's not easy. We think because we, we've been offering this for 20 plus years, we think it's relatively straightforward. It's easy. You hop on a plane, you come here, you receive your treatment, you get pregnant. But for the people receiving that treatment is it's not that straightforward. So why should people choose North Cyprus? First of all, as I've mentioned, we have 20 plus years of experience. And what that means is we've been offering this for 20 plus years, and we've been offering this to international patients 20 plus years. So we are very used to offering these services um, in a satellite manner where we have established um, contacts with a lot of doctors, a lot of hospitals, a lot of uh, clinicians all over the world, in the US, in the UK, all over Europe, in Turkey, everywhere. We have established ties with physicians where the patients can receive their initial treatments locally. They can prepare in terms of their taking their medication, in terms of seeing their physicians for follow-up. They can prepare initially and come to Cyprus, come to North Cyprus to finalize their treatments in a matter of a week. So they can, they can stay here in North Cyprus for about a week and finalize their treatment. So that's a huge benefit because not every person has three, four weeks to spare to receive treatment. So that makes it easier for patients. They would be under our supervision. They would be under our monitoring, but uh, they can have those initial ultrasound scans or the initial injections locally. So that makes it more appealing. And it's affordable. Compared to the US, compared to the UK or EU, North Cyprus is much more affordable uh, in terms of fertility treatment prices because, um, because of the exchange rate. We do use Turkish lira here as well, just like in Turkey. And since we use Turkish lira, uh, with the exchange rates, um, it is very favorable for people who earn euros or dollars. So we would be offering these treatments at a fraction of the cost of what they do cost in the US or in any other part of the world, pretty much. And because we're very used to offering um, fertility treatments for international patients, we do have a large establishment. We do have a large um, hospital, we do have a number of patient coordinators, we, we do have a number of physicians, and um, essentially that means no waiting list. If you are a part of NHS in the UK, for example, to be able to get treated, you could, you could wait up to um, a year. Um, and that's a long time, if, especially when you're considering your um, biological clock, to wait for a year or two, it's, it's a long time. And often, People are not very happy with the services they receive with the NHS um, because it's, it's, it's a substandard service. It's, it's free of charge, but most of the time people just opt out of the NHS and just come um, privately to us because they just don't think it's worth it because they're not receiving a great um, level of care and they're just done with it. So the establishments here are the level of, the, the level of technology used. It's state of the art. And people see that. And because it's international patients that we cater to, we pay extra attention to their accommodations, how they are received here, how they are welcome here. Um, and they, they each have a patient coordinator that organizes everything for them. So it makes it a little bit easier. It may, people do feel special. People do feel like um, they are being heard and they are being treated properly. So that's, these are very, very important for people, especially um, when they travel for a specific treatment. 
We do offer a number of treatment options, and some of these are the conventional treatments that have been uh, that everybody has been offering for some time, and some of these are a little out of the box treatments uh, that we have devised over the years because fertility treatments should not be just one thing. Um, every single patient is different. Every single patient's um, treatment requirements are different. So you cannot just um, offer one prescription to all patients and expect that it, it'll work for them because there are women at the age of 35 who've entered premature menopause. There are women at the age of 42, 43 with perfect ovarian reserves. So it's, it's not one size fits all. So you have to approach every single patient independently and individually and then see um, what kind of treatment is most suitable for them. For example, uh, artificial insemination, also, you, also known as uh, intrauterine insemination, IUI, is one treatment option that we offer to women in their 20s because it's the least invasive method of fertility treatments. And it doesn't require a lot of hormones. It doesn't requ require a lot of medication. It doesn't require harvesting the eggs from the ovaries. It's very, very minimally invasive. But again, we offer it to women who cannot get pregnant on their own at the age of 25 to maybe up to 30. Because after that, uh, the chance of success will be very, very minimal with IUI. IVF, in vitro fertilization, ICSI, it's the standard mode of treatment when you're considering using your own eggs and own sperm samples. So these are, this is a treatment option for people maybe in their late 20s, early to mid 30s, maybe late 30s, who are not able to fall pregnant using their own eggs and sperm cells in natural conception because there's probably some sort of an ovulation problem or maybe the sperm count is a little low so it's not sufficient for a natural conception so what we do is we assist the couple um, in the laboratory to combine the egg and the sperm cells so that we can fertilize the egg with the sperm cell and place it in the uterus for conception to take place so essentially what we do is we, uh, something that doesn't uh, occur naturally, which should, but it doesn't. So we help it in the laboratory environment and we put the egg and the sperm together, create the embryo, and then we place the embryo in the uterus so that pregnancy can be helped. We do have other um, options, for example, especially women in older age brackets. In today's world, women are also climbing the job ladder. They are spending time on their careers. They are delaying um, their um, reproductive um, age in a way. So for these groups of women, maybe they're planning their pregnancies in the after their 40s, 42, 43, 44. But this is also a time where um, their reproductive function has gone significantly down. And in, in some cases, they're not able to achieve a pregnancy using their own eggs. So in more advanced age brackets or women who are younger, but who have entered menopause prematurely, this is something that we are able to offer them. We use donor eggs during uh, an IVF cycle. So a young and pregnancy proven healthy egg donor donates her eggs for the couple so that donor X can be used during the IVF cycle. There are options like tandem IVF cycle where we use both the eggs of the patient and donor eggs as well as backup, especially when they're considering that their eggs may not work so well. Ovarian PRP treatment, just as I mentioned a few minutes ago, it is one of the new out of the box treatment options that we offer. It is offered mainly to stimulate the primordial follicle line so that we can commit those primordial follicles that would actually go to waste in a normal natural cycle. We commit them into oogenesis. We commit them into um, becoming oocytes, becoming eggs. So we do increase the chances of getting pregnant either naturally or with IVF um, in, the subsequent, in the subsequent months. IVF using donor sperm, again, 
azospermia is a problem for many men and it's the main cause of infertility especially if it's non-obstructive azospermia, meaning that there is no production of sperm. So it's not the blockage that's making sperm not enter the ejaculate, but it's actually something more fundamental. The production of the sperm is problematic. Then there is that option of using donor sperm. We only use donor sperm for, from certified sperm banks. So we do not allow walk-in uh, sperm donations because they have to be certified and you have to be able to guarantee, provide some sort of a guarantee that the, the sperm cells have been extensively tested. PGT, pre-implantation genetic testing is available for a number of options. For example, in older age brackets, maybe you do want to screen the embryos for a genetic disease such as Down syndrome, Tau syndrome. So there are a number of chromosomal anomalies that can be screened with PGT. And it's also used for um, known single gene disorders. So if there is a known single gene disorder in the family, and you want to make sure that the, the your child doesn't have it, doesn't get that um, genetic disorder, doesn't inherit that genetic disorder. So you, you can um, screen that specific gene mutation and only transfer the embryos that are healthy. And also um, family balancing is an option because when you're screening the chromosomes, when you're doing a chromosomal screening, you also see um, the sex of the embryo. So for family balancing, if you have a couple of girls and you want a boy, if you have a couple of boys and you want to have a girl, that's always an ethical discussion. But in certain parts of the world, it's important to have a balanced family. And rather than going through abortion, um, I think it's a much more sensible option um, in terms of balancing out uh, the family, if that's something that you would like to do. And finally, gestational surrogacy is something that is being offered at, um, in, in Northern Cyprus within certain um, legal limits. Um, it's only offered to women who cannot carry a pregnancy. Either they, they don't have a uterus or they, they have an underdeveloped uterus or the, the uterus has, has to be removed due to, uh, due to any, any, any condition. So it, it requires that... Um, a heterosexual couple applies and the woman is not able to carry the pregnancy. So these are the terms of um, gestational surrogacy. So again, uh, just to sum up why fertility treatments in North Cyprus, because of the cost advantages. The cost of treatment in North Cyprus is much, much lower compared to Europe, compared to the US and many, many other countries. And you are, able to receive out-of-the-box treatments um, because we cater to international patients, because we have to remain competitive. Um, we do have to offer innovative approaches. We do have to offer a higher chance of success. So people hop on the plane and prefer you as opposed to going somewhere local or going somewhere in any other country. So you have to be very competitive. You have to be able to offer high chances of success. To be able to do that, you have to keep on top of your game and uh, be able to um, offer innovative uh, research and technology. In terms of legal coverage, everything um, that I have mentioned in terms of the treatment options, they're all perfectly legal and offered legally. And our donor base, that's one of the reasons why IVF with egg, donor, the egg donation is quite successful in North Cyprus, because we do have access to a large donor base. It's on a voluntary basis, and mostly because there's a lot of um, international students here in Northern Cyprus, the egg donors are often between the ages of 20 to 25, so they're quite young, quite healthy, and on a voluntary basis, they are able to donate their eggs to recipients. So that means we're able to provide young, fresh donor eggs to our recipients, increasing the chances of success. And accreditation is another important uh, aspect. All of the hospitals, most, most of the hospitals, let's say, are accredited uh, with ISO certification. So I'm leaving you guys with a picture of the Kyrenia castle and thanking you
for the time and I, I appreciate the time. So in our further talks, I'll be talking about um, specific treatments in general. Dr. Ahmed, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Thank you. Uh, it was really informative and very useful uh, to learn about North Cyprus uh, IVF treatment method and technologies that we are using it. Uh, in our next uh, next uh, exhibition, 2023rd of October, we will have Romania and Moldova and Polonia, Poland. So uh, we are looking forward to receive more uh, in detail uh, presentation. Uh, of course, uh, the general presentation was very useful and we need to add a little bit, a few more uh, minutes, like 10 more minutes on, on your presentation. We have enough, we will, we will spare enough time to you in order to give more in detail uh, uh, presentation for our next uh, exhibition as a webinar for IVF. Thank you very much for joining us from Cyprus, yeah. Lively, and uh, we'll keep in touch. Thank you. Well, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we arrive to our uh, end of our webinars program. This is our third days of Balkan region. Uh, Turkish healthcare travel exhibition, online exhibition and conference, uh, third edition. As you may remember that we organized the first one in Ukraine, the second one in uh, Russia and all CIS market was covering. And the third one is uh, Balkan region. So in Balkan region, we try to cover seven countries all together within these three days in order to share our experience and our know-how and our technologies in the uh, latest technologies which we apply in the treatments and healthcare industry. So we are delighted to be with you together these uh, three days. And uh, please do not forget that the B2B uh, business to business meetings is still going on. And uh, today and tomorrow, also in order to give more chance to our colleagues, visitors and the participant, we would like to extend one more day. So 26th of uh, September as well, Sunday, we're going to the, the platform will going to open to uh, having a request of meeting or requesting a meeting from other parties. We would like to keep the platform open in order that we can increase the number of B2B and business uh, meetings in between the professional visitors and the exhibitors that we can able to build more strongly link and relation between Balkan region and Turkey. So we are delighted to be together and we are, thank you very much for your valuable time that you spare and be with us, follow up our webinars and attend to the B2B uh, meetings to build a partnership and to build close relationship with our exhibitors. Within our exhibitors, we have clinics, hospitals, uh, thermal resorts, uh, West Palm Wellness Resorts, and as well as travel agencies, member of TURSAP, Turkish Travel Agency Association, which is accredited by the Ministry of Health as travel healthcare travel agent uh, and medical tourism agent facilitator to facilitate the patient from one country to Turkish hospitals. So please go ahead and request your meetings with our exhibitors, whoever you would like to meet, in order to build close contact and close relationship together to be win-win cooperation. Win-win cooperation meet a strong, warm connection. Thank you very much for being with us and see you next time, 2023rd of October, in our Romania, Moldova and Poland online exhibition, which will gonna be fourth edition of our Turkish healthcare travel online exhibition and conference. Ladies and gentlemen, as Turkish Healthcare Travel Council Chairman, would like to thank you on behalf of members, on behalf of healthcare industry, on behalf of my country, 
We are thanking your cooperation and we are thanking your collaboration and choosing as preferred destination Turkey and North Cyprus for your future uh, further treatments of IVF and other uh, treatments which you are looking for for your citizen and for your patient. Thank you very much. See you soon. Bye for now. Everyone knows that Turkey is a great destination for holidays, but it's also a rising star of healthcare services for international medical travelers. Over a million patients from all over the world choose Turkey for treatment and diagnostics every year. Turkey offers world-class medical services in state-of-the-art private hospitals and brand new PPP city hospitals. Turkey, the rising star destination for international healthcare travelers. Thanks to investments in the latest technology, talent and infrastructure, Turkey today offers high quality medical services to patients from all over the world. Orthopedic patients come to Turkey for a wide range of technologically advanced procedures, successfully performed by highly qualified Turkish doctors at a time to suit you. Turkey, the rising star destination for international healthcare travelers. The art of medicine is the heritage of Anatolia. You are in Turkey, the place where the first hospital of the world was founded and Hippocrates was born and grew up. In these lands, we treated the diseases with water, precious plants, and music. Our thousands of years of medical tradition reached a new level today with the advanced technology. But hospitality of Turkey and its air useful for both soul and body is still the same. Turkey attracts everybody by its nature, history, dynamic social life, as well as the best and most effective treatment possibilities since long time. With its high standard hospitals and doctors known around the world, Turkey maintains its specialty of being the center of health of the region since long time. Because Turkey is at the intersection points of its continents. It is located at the center of Europe, Balkans, Russian, Middle East, and North Africa. Approximately one billion people can arrive at Turkey only with a few hours flight. Turkish Airlines carries millions of people from 120 countries and 290 cities to Turkey by direct flights. There is a reason why so many people prefer Turkey because Turkey offers the newest technology treatment systems at the same time with the world. With its competitive price policy, it is among first choices of those who are looking for the top quality service with optimum prices. Turkey provides comfort with its high standard hospitals during healing process, with its hospitals having Center of Excellence Awards and Joint Commission Accreditation Certificates, it maintains its privileged place in the region. An experienced team with 724 specialist services and air ambulances works for satisfaction of the guests. Experienced Turkish doctors who break grounds all around the world, continues to control their patients after treatment. Thus, Turkey takes place on the top three in the world health tourism destinations.
Turkey accommodates patients from 144 countries every year in the risky treatments and operations required high technology. It uses robotic surgery. Marrow, organ and stem cell transplantations are performed by awarded doctors through the latest technology. With innovative treatment systems such as inorganic organ production and transplantation, life-saving results are achieved. There is a progressive vision behind this success. Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, the founder of Modern Republic of Turkey, started this vision by saying, entrust me to Turkish doctors. Today, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, president of the Republic, is still treated by Turkish doctors. Since the early years of the Republic, young doctors have completed their postgraduate education abroad. Turkish health sector has made a big progress with an investment of $30 billion in 15 promising successes in the treatment of common cancer and cardiovascular diseases. A complete healing is achieved in a short time by non-surgical treatments of the brain tumors. Children needing treatment in different branches such as blood diseases, marrow transplantation, heart surgery, brain tumors, etc. are also achieving health again in Turkey because the best treatment methods are applied with a smiling and kindly approach. Services allowing the children to have a pleasant time facilitate treatment processes. Children, our most precious existences, are deserving of this special attention. Also, there are many treatment alternatives for those who want to have children in Turkey. Couples are enjoying having children and growing their family with infertility treatment, advanced genetics applications, and in vitro fertilization methods. Turkey is where the civilizations was born and continue. With its active city life, untouched nature and majestic history, Turkey transforms your treatment process into a comfortable and pleasant holiday. Three hundred seventy five member organizations, which adopted ethical principles of Turkish Health Care and Travel Council, work for happiness of the guests. We are at the intersection point of hearts and continents. Hope to see you soon. Right choice for your life. Turkey. Healing generations for centuries. <laughs>